Our adventures in Corvosa may have been uh, somewhat brief so far. Everything that's happened in our first four sessions spanning only a couple of days. Boy, is a lot of stuff happened. It's been three days. <laughs> several days, then. I guess it'd be technically more than a couple. We are up to several at this point. But before we get into our uh, catch up, <clears throat> recap, pretext. And John's almost at one murder a day. Wow. It's mm-hmm. only averaging 0.66 murders a day so far. So Let's use his okay. appropriate name. Do we. Thank you to Paizo for sponsoring our show here on their network. Uh, obviously producing the adventure, the game system, everything. Letting us continue to come here, hang out, and do stupid crap on their channel. It's a good time. <laughs> We're having a good time. Are we idiots? Yes. Are we entertaining idiots? I would like to think so, but debatable. <laughs> our other partners, Norse Foundry. Where did my D20 go? Oh, oh it's I, over here. I was playing with it the entire free show, and I actually lost track of it. Uh, with their nice fancy metal dice, they got a wide assortment, a wide variety of all kinds of different types and styles, from metal to gemstone to literal glass dice that I think you have. Mm. Uh, we got a discount code. I'm going to level with you. I don't know what direction it is from where my camera is right here. It's it's on the little scrolling panel. Is it directly below me? Uh, directly below me? Pretty, uh, much, pretty much directly below me. A little scrolling panel down there that comes through. That works on absolutely everything on the entire website, including the high-end like malachite gemstone stuff, which so normally pretty. you do not get discounts on in those kind of situations. Sirenscape, man, I'm so happy we get to use official sound sets for this for Sirenscape. We, uh, me and Arcadis, sat down before this show. I was like, all right, let's prep like one more sound set out in advance, like one more scene, just to be safe. It was like four minutes of just minor tweaking because it all exists already and I just download the sound set they already have. <laughs> wow. Found it. Thanks. Aha. Uh-huh. We're having a, we're having an encounter inside of a, a CD jazz bar. <laughs> well, don't forget, you can also make the golden but hyperfist. They have a huge amount of uh, a huge variety of immersive sounds for a ton of of different pre-read, pre-read adventures, and not just for Pathfinder either, through a variety of tabletop campaigns. Definitely worth checking out. You can build your own fully custom as well, which is what I was doing for literally every campaign I've ever run up until now. And boy, howdy, it's so much easier when there's a pre-made one, and I'm so happy, but the custom ones are also super cool too. We wouldn't have, where would we have been without Machine Gun Fist if I didn't build the custom campaign and screw it up and then Get machine well, gun fist. what was that, a CPU issue? That I caused- think it was a CPU issue. I don't think I screwed up the setup at all. Um, but Uh-oh. most recently, I don't know if we're going to have any direct map-based... Oh, we're, gonna, we're going to... Oh, I forgot we left off. But we're going directly into Ark and Forge in about three seconds. Yes! Uh, both map-making software and also our virtual tabletop. Fantastic. If you, like us, have a screen on the table, if you have come to the future, if you're done doodling on a vaguely beige square grid trying to make your life happen and want to get all the value of the cool map assets but still play with minis on a table. Mark and Forge, got a discount code for them too now. And thanks to Ghost of Zon here in the chat. Campaign's been fun so far. Give the players some motivation to do something smart so I have an excuse to hand out these eight hero points. What? Oh boy. And it comes... He's been sitting on them. ...with a villain point. Rending Swipe. Oh no. Huh. So much blood. I feel like like that is do bleed Uh. damage equal to damage dealt. I don't want to get hit by that. I mean, I did call out a hit on myself, so I I guess it's coming. I can use that one. You finally got one you can use? I have two I can very use. It's just an impossible shot that's in the dumpster. Impossible to use. It is kind of hard to use. It's in somewhat specific circumstances. But. I'll trade you right now. Nah. Impossible shot? (laughs) Yeah. Here. (laughs) You're not going to really use it either. I'll do it. If you want to make unwise decisions, you're free to make unwise decisions. <laughs> Did I just watch like a flea market exchange happen? I... I'm interested in this. Okay. I'm okay. interested in this. These hero, po- these, these hero point cards are... They're interesting. So I have How have a... you not found a use for this? How do you still have this? Because I'm action and uh, hungry. I guess, yeah, you're very action star. If I was using a bow, I could easily use that. 
but I have to. Yeah, spend you need a, you least... need a free action. That's true. Yeah. This this one doesn't go off on its own. You got to. Well, I mean, it does. We got to do stuff to trigger it. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. So in our journeys so far, these five <laughs> fine <laughs> defenders of Corvosa. What are you giggling about? <laughs> Shut because up. You gave me this, and I have the other card I, I asked you about. I'm Kim. I, I feel like I perhaps made a mistake, but we'll see how it goes. You haven't made it's derp. You haven't made a mistake. <laughs> what I do is irrelevant. It's derp. I'll find a way to do something stupid, regardless. Yeah, I mean he's not wrong. So far, our five defenders of Corvosa have pledged themselves in defense of the city's new queen regent. Servants of the crown, you reported to Citadel Volshevik to be inducted, deputized by the Corvosan guard. And now, only a day later, you are off on your first official adventure from them. Now, your first task and service directly to the city and to the crown itself is to track down a man by the name of uh, Varric Van Kaskerken, a sergeant of the Corvosan Guard as well, but one who defected very shortly after the chaos broke out in the, w in the wake of the king's demise. Is it really called a defection if you just don't show up for work one day? If you're in a, that's a military defection. organization, I think that's like categorically well, what a defection is. I think it's is. called deserting. Defecting is when you go to the other side. He made I his guess own faction. I mean, well, I mean, if no, you're in no, a city, we're not going off track now. We're getting into I mean, this game. If you're in, a, in an anarchic, like, riotous city, mm. the other side... Is the citizens is is kind of the citizens. Hmm. So he did uh -huh. join the citizenry, and he took all of his gear. Technically, oh wow, you're know. right. Deserter is probably more accurate. Though. Okay, but it's called okay. no call. Deserter no show. was definitely the word I meant to use, but I, I would definitely see an argument for either way. Uh, I think could be made in a situation such as this: a deserter, by the name of Eric Van Kaskerken, uh, who took his uh, a squad of guards with him when they left and went to go open a butcher shop oh my Special god cuts. Near the north where the town. heroes of old corvosa no, the not. hook and having tracked him down to uh, all worlds meet uh, invading his operation in broad daylight in the middle of the morning while they were handing out meat to all the good little boys who's gonna stop us the guards the guards <laughs> oh wait, wait we <laughs> have badges <laughs> well, we're not supposed I don't to do believe that. you have your badges on you hid your badges before you came on. in here after we came in I was about to say mine was always on <laughs> yeah, I put mine back on now it's mono a mono Fair well enough. it doesn't matter we can put them on after we beat them senseless well you've already beaten many of them senseless yeah. you fought your way through the front end of the operation and at the end of our session last week, came face to face with Sergeant Van Kaskerken himself, who, absolutely bewildered that brigands would force their way into his charity organization, here. <laughs> blades swinging, and we tried to talk, guns firing. They wouldn't let we me talk to him. We tried to be diplomatic. He's taking a position at the top of the stairs in this hallway here, spear in hand. Bow slung across his back, still wearing his regalia of the Corvosan guard, full tabard over a heavy scale male hauberk. And he does not look terribly interested in mincing words right now. So, as we left off, I believe we were going straight in. Thank you. To initiative. To some initiative. I rolled a 20. Remember? No. Oh. That's a shame. I rolled a 19. You I actually rolled a 20. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Oh, Flabla, what's that give you? That is a 25 altogether. 25. I'll take that. Hey. And John? Um, 24. Because I'm scouting still. One Ooh. lower. Yeah. Darren? 24 as well. Uh, who wants to go first? Um, I'll let Darren go first. Sure. Okie dokie. Oh, I didn't know you were scouting, so that would be 26. Which brings us to Arden. Uh, 23. And Wrath. Oh, yeah, just casual 29. 29 in here. <laughs> These numbers are so fat. You guys are level two. Did you roll 20? 19. 19. Jeez. With a scouting and a improved initiative. I improved initiative. Oh, improved initiative. Okay. Did you guys yeah. get that natively? Nope. Okay. I was curious because I, I feel like they did in first edition. 
because it was kind of like their thing was they either like got draw a bonus first to initiative, thing. Yeah, yeah it was a definitely. A, I thought it was, it was good. A, uh, heritage part of it. Yeah. Um, Raz had it. Oh, may we have a uh, token for? Uh, oh yes, the dude. I've got these guys. If you don't have our mark. Yourself. Cool. Hey, he's actually got his own thing. Yeah, Pathfinder Pons. We we have the uh, the comes in their own Pathfinder Pons that Pizo sent down to us. So <laughs> most of these, you know, named figures are going to have their specific tokens with their specific art. These pawns are super neat. I appreciate them. Um, <laughs> Thought he said Pathfinder puns. And before I get further in here, there was another card coming out from Haven the Oracle. Finally have enough points for my first hero point. Ooh. Don't die, young idealist slash walking target. Hand this one down to Nick. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there is a target back there. Ah, this on one target. will surely come in quite handy. Surge of magic. <laughs> one more time. You want to blind trade that with somebody? Yep. Or I, might, I might wind up blind trading this <laughs> with somebody. Hey, what if it. you could right recast here. a spell? Right here. But you don't have magic. Venkaskar can himself going to get a 25, which thanks to the scouting bonus for Floblin is going to put him below Floblin it. instead of Tied. So thanks, as buddy. he comes to move down the stairs here, uh, again, enraged, bewildered, calling out uh, from his position at the top of the hallway here. There's no coin for you to pillage, brigands. We run a charity organization. There's no treasure for you to loot. Um, he's clearly rushing down the stairs towards Floblin and Arden. And Reth, with your position in the back of the hallway here, you are the first to react. Is it just him? Uh, it looks like just him, yeah. That's the things that you, you can currently see, just him at the top of the stairs. Okay. I couldn't tell because right behind him is the guy Oh, that's, yeah, on, on the map behind him is the unconscious guy in the front room. Yeah. Just he is, sure. uh, he's like at the top of the stairs. So realistically, he's even like 10 feet up the stairs for simplicity's sake. We'll go with there. And you right. still actually, this was short enough after the previous encounter, as he kind of emerged and his cannon blows almost immediately, Foblin's Bless is still up. I think we decided three he had three rounds turns. left is what we decided yep. on, yeah. I, I kept track. I cool. Kept... <laughs> well, I believe I ended combat last week with a loaded gun. No, I had just... Not loaded. Not loaded. 50-50 says it's not loaded. I don't remember. Not a problem. Like I said, action starved. Reload in one way or another this turn. So I'm going to move uh, back a little bit over into cover, covered reload, and uh, peek around the corner and attempt to non-lethally shoot. <laughs> attempt, Barry. Attempt. Aiming for the legs so that maybe he falls down the stairs or something. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> shoot him down the stairs. And that is a 10 which will give me a 21. 21 through the doorway here will just catch him with the shot. Right over Floblin's head. 19, because non-lethal. 19 will not. Uh, so around the door frame, door frame there, with Floblin in the way, even with him up the stairs, it's a bit of an awkward shot, and your bullet buries itself in the staircase uh, just below him. Well... Uh, if we're going to be careful with him, look out. Floblin. He uh, he looks up at him and goes, Right, if you come quietly, I won't have to burn you. So I'm going to go ahead and go, Tarakan! Cast Daze on him. He's going to make himself a will save. Yep. Uh, big armor dudes with spears are typically great at those. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, 19. He does succeed. So he just takes uh, four mental non-lethal damage. Two, right? Is it a basic save? Is it just, it's four normally, right? Yeah. So we take two. If he's oh, yeah, you're right. My bad. Sorry. He takes two. My apologies. So yeah, a little little bit of a stagger as he readies himself so, for this charge. Yeah. So so he sees that Floblin sees I'm like, oh, that didn't really do much. So he's like, ah, touch shield. Bless is an emanation, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah, so I would not. So you would it. not get it behind yeah. the doorway. Um, As you pop up this shield, uh, Sergeant Van Kaskigan takes two kind of large steps, two, st uh, two stairs at a time down this staircase towards Floblin. Uh, and as he does, he swings out wide. 
with the tip of his spear, twirling it around over the banister into the space above the hall. Uh, continuing this sweep, well before you, this, he hasn't like come within range of you at all, mm -hmm. uh, until he's whipped the spear around completely backwards, uh, with the point out behind him. Uh, putting the motion of his steps down to the stairs into one big thrust with the butt end of the spear down towards Floblin. And it is a long spear, so we can get you from the other uh, base yeah. of the staircase here. I, th I, th I, th I thought it was going to vault over you. <laughs> Do something crazy. Yeah. Um, and I will actually oh, go no. ahead and accept that this is never going to happen. And... <laughs> Slough two of these cards here for a reroll on that attack. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna give up on the dream of that card I've been camping since the very beginning, <laughs> which was never triggered once. And it's going to be a 25 to hit you. That is a hit, and I'll use my shield is to absorb at least five of the uh, okay. damage. So the butt of the spear crashes through this arcane projection of yours. And you are going to take. Where's another D8? Where are my D8s? Oh, yeah. Multiple? Ooh. 14 points of non lethal damage. Oof. Oof. Okay, so. Hey. Take nine. My shield. Yeah, it crashes right through that, which will. Take nine. It will, it will uh, blunt it a little oh. bit. And as he, he oh. kind of you know, slams this <laughs> almost on the Floblin's gut on the floor oh. there. Through this little defense, uh, calls out the group of you. We're running a damn charity here. We're feeding the people. Uh, Darren. Okay. Um, first, you have to answer for your crimes, Oathbreaker. In the name of a guard, surrender. And is that a like, intimidate check? You just kind of. No, I, I, I'm bad at that. <laughs> that sounds like that it's intended to be intimidating. You. It's an order. Yeah, sure. Like... Well, I'll, I'll, we'll, throw, we'll call that an intimidate. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, uh, hey, I rolled an 11. Uh, so that's an 11. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> it's not an intimidating order, but it is a lawful one. And he looks up and glares over you and kind of narrows his eyes as he just stands on the stairs here. With a little bit of height advantage using the buzz of spear to kind of keep Arden and Floblin back. Oh, of course. And he looks down to the goblin like he's just noticing the badge on your chest, kind uh -huh. of distracted by the... Goblin. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Of course, the city is in dire straits as it is, and the best use of the Corvos and Guards men is to shut down a charity for the poor. I'd hoped you'd come quietly, sir, and uh, probably best not to have our casters be the front line. So I will uh, advance. I'll draw, uh, I'm going to push up past... Um, past Arden and just kind of brace for yeah. impact. And as you go to move up past Arden here, uh, from this extended jab he has at Floblin, he whips the base of the mm -hmm. spear up towards the side of your head for an attack of opportunity, which I feel like you were confident. You pretty, pretty confident pretty that was going to start coming. coming. Um, that is going to be a 21. Uh, 21 will uh, normal hit me. And you are going to take nine points of non-lethal damage. Okay. It's, it is non-lethal piercing damage, if that matters to anybody at second level. Uh, no, it, it might matter with the cards. That's true. It could matter for... Very yeah, it could matter for cards. Um, and uh, I've uh, moved up, and let's see here. Drop the... Um, I have my crossbow in my hand still. So I'll drop it. Okay. Um, I have the sap in the other hand. I'm going to quick draw my parrying dagger. Um and take a swing at him with it. Okay. Uh, pff, shame I waste such a good roll when I don't have Hunt Prey up, but that's going to be a 26. Yeah, 26 will definitely catch him on his position at the stairs here. Woo! All right, that's uh, going to be three, five points of piercing. That's like a stab. That's not on lethal. That's like a... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's okay. a quick slash up. All right, John. Um... I'm going to just free drop the spear that I'm holding, and so I'm going to just run up here to Goblin, Floblin. I'm going to grab him by the scruff of his neck and throw him behind me. <laughs> Maybe that's what? Like, what are you doing? Make me that legs check. <laughs> that's an 18 on the die, so a 26 total. Uh, 26? What is your fort DC? Is it 16? It's 15. 
You, uh, critically <laughs> succeed, you grab <laughs> Floblin and you throw him behind you. Um, oh. <laughs> you just toss him out of the way. Bye, Floblin. What are you doing, Joel? The rest of my, the rest of my movement is literally just getting right up in his face, trying to get into the under the, under the spear. Okay, okay. Right, John, take it easy on him, all right? And he's. He's already got this swing cracked up towards uh, Darren, so you're able to get in his guard as his focus is the other direction, and uh, it will bring us to Arden. I, I, I donated eight gold to your charity. Why, why are you trying to hurt me? Uh, and uh, he'll uh, th- throw his hands up and 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 and, and n- go away. Cast fear. Ooh, okay. Uh, 15. That's going to fail. So he frightened, too. He is going to be frightened, too. St- 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 stop! Get, get, get away from my friends! And, uh... And, and I want a receipt! <laughs> this spell emanates out. You see him kind of, uh... He's on a staircase. He can't easily, like, retreat backwards. Uh, but he pulls the butt of the spear back and almost kind of hunkers down, holding it closer to his body. Uh, feared by this spell, but clearly... Casting his gaze between the two of you that are up in his face here with a, a bit more distress. Uh, <laughs> Ray shield. See, I think I've confused a fighter for a monk. <laughs> you got your fist. I thought this your fist out. Comes. Put up your dukes. <laughs> Back around to rest. So, then. while you hear the sounds of reloading around the corner, I'll uh, I'll say to him, "Now, Varric, I'll give you a chance. Put down your spear and let us take you in." And you hear like the click clacking of the gun being reloaded. <laughs> That's a diplomacy <laughs> and a cover reload. All right, give me a diplomacy check. I don't expect him to come quietly, but it ain't gonna hurt him to try. That's yeah. a two with a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> We're, We're so bad and hardly talking. hear it over the sound of the gun going. <laughs> You're in the other room. There's two people in his face. He just failed to save against fear. He doesn't even hear it. It doesn't even remotely process this this uh, this request. Not even a little bit. Peek around the corner, see that he's blatantly ignoring me because I don't know he didn't hear me, and um, I will wait to shoot. Okay. I will assume he heard me and see what he does. Fair enough. Uh, so Foblin tossed back towards Reth in the back here. He uh, stumbles quickly to get back up after being tossed by John here, and he's like, Roy, enough missing noise, guy. He takes a deep breath, and you see the flames start forming in his mouth. He's going to fire his laser and screams out, Dakon cool, fire ray. Oh, actual laser. Okay. <laughs> Was that going to hit, or is that a reflex save? Or? It's, a, it's a dispel deck. Okay, well, he's frightened too. Oh, that's a big number. That is uh, 18 on the die plus 9, Quiz so me. that is uh, 27, I believe. Is that with your bless? Yeah. It hits. That's hits. It just hits? Okay. And, um, that's one off of a critical hit. Uh, but but you still... catch him square. Like this, this fire ray, the two of you in front of him see this like line and this burst of flames across his chest. To be fair, really? he punched me I, pretty that, hard. That's, in that, between that, us, ow. right between us, we're just like Ooh, looking uh, at each other and look back up all one. That's going to be nine <laughs> points of fire damage. Ooh. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, it is a plus one because it's a fire spell in my, uh, in my heritage feat. So it's at 28. So that is going to critically hit yeah. him. So he's going to take... Um, 18 points of fire damage? He's going to take... Yeah, he's 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 gonna take eighteen points of fire damage, and he's gonna take two d four persistent fire damage oh. plus plus one. And he- if after this <laughs> hits, like it's not just a brief blast, his uh, his tabard and his hauberk has burst into flames now, and he has profoundly caught fire. And for oh. my last um, action, uh, shoot. You, you, you don't, you, you <laughs> you don't have that anymore. You, you, you broke it. It takes ten. Oh, minutes uh, for, to well back. then, for my last action, I will I will move diagonally right behind Arden. Come, so, he's come uh, back uh, up. Please, please, please now. So I look around the corner and just see a burst of flames. You see, oh, you know, he probably. <laughs> that's what you me. get. <laughs> <laughs> so frightened too and profoundly on fire. Uh, Sergeant Van Kaskerken in a bit of a panic here. Um, <laughs> the name of his memoir. <laughs> it's gonna take. Oh, get in the. Yeah, you can roll it. It takes to the end of his turn. Um, it's gonna take. Okay. Like a quick, almost two, as much a, a push towards John uh, as it is a damaging strike here. Uh, just a quick little run 
with the butt of the spear, only for a 15, frightened as he is. I just literally just... Okay, this is... I'm really close. I, that's a long spear. It's hard. And he, I get it. Uh, he is going to retreat up the stairs, uh, running back the 10 feet up to the top landing, provoking from yeah, the just, mighty fists of John Teller. I just, will assist for free because of fake out when my big gun... That's a 17, so 28. So you get plus one on this. Um, That's 20, 21. 29, because bless. I mean, still a plus Doesn't one. Matter. Uh, 21, 21 will definitely connect with him. Get punched in the back. <laughs> I can't pick up a D4 for five points of damage. They're he's not, sharp. He's, a, he's not turning and running. The, the man seems fairly well competent. He uses this kind of strike to sort of cover him backing up the stairs, but he's backing up a staircase. Yeah. It's not, like, organized, and it's not terribly defensible. So you get one good swing in while he's trying to focus on his footwork. Uh, but he's going to end up 15 feet back above you in the doorway now at the top of the stairs. Um, so you, if you want, you can just put his token over the unconscious body in the other room because that's fundamentally where he is. Um, where he is immediately going to let go of the spear with one one hand, uh, throw himself against the wall at the top of this, and start desperately trying to pat out the fire. He takes three. Um, unless he puts unless it out. he puts that immediately, which he will do. Okay. Um, so he will use the action to put this uh, quench his fire enough just to kind of <laughs> smoldering bits of embers it's here. Understandable. Uh, at this point, now a little bit beyond. Continuing the conversation for his moment of panic, Darren. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, has he dropped his spear? Or did he just kind no? Of he hug just it has out? it in one hand. He just has it in one hand, hugging out. Okay. He's definitely not like wielding it in a defensive position right now. Okay. Um. So this might make the map a little bit awkward, but I think I have to go after him. Um. Can I hunt prey him? Can I see where he is? Yeah, you can see him. You at the bottom of the stairs. You can see him at the top of the stairs. Okay. Cool. So I'll hunt prey. And, uh, hey, get back here! And, uh, slide up and run up the stairs. Um, so you can try and push past him? Because well, he's he, in, he like... He ducked around the corner, you said, well, he's, right? He's, like, in the doorway. He's, okay. And the wall that's at the end of the hall at the edge of the staircase clearly continues up top because he's slammed his back into it trying to smother the fire, still in the doorway, and then patted his front out with his other hand. Can I uh, tumble so you through? Would, so it would be a tumble through or a shove if let's, you wanted to try to move in the room with Let's him. try to tumble through because I don't want him to retreat any further than he can already get. Fair enough. Give me an acrobatics check. I have that. Ooh, that's not great. But what I have here is I have critical moment. All or nothing. Reroll the check twice and take the best result after rolling a check. So I get to reroll it twice. Is this one if you fail, you're doomed? And if I still fail, I'm doomed. This one. is one of the ones that they had on the yep. back of the box that we saw as our yeah. preview. We know this one. I'll Ooh. take that 18. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so, good. 25. Uh, so with a 25, uh, you would be able to tumble past him. And there is, um, in that giant black void to the right, a map of the upper floor. Uh, which we might need to divide and conquer now that we have become upstairs. Um, so hey, you, we can use the other tokens. There we go. I'm you smart. emerge into the top of this uh, to which room is in the front? Which looks what looks like a small sitting area, a break room perhaps, a round table in the center of the chamber with uh, four pretty simple wooden chairs set around it, a deck of cards, and some uh, scattered. Uh, of moist parchment wrappings that look like they might have been from somebody's breakfast or lunch. Huh. Those kind of. parchment wrappings look moist. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, you got a, you got a fairly open break room here as you get behind them. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the momentum of uh, spinning past him to finish out with a backhanded swipe with the sap in my hand. <sighs> Come quietly now. Uh, that's a 27. Oh, 27 will definitely hit him. Out of bless range, unfortunately. Uh, well, he went, his friend went down anyway, so it wouldn't be enough for a crit quite yet. Do, do, do. Oof. Oof. Damn business. Oh, Ooh. my God. All right, that's a 16 points of non <laughs> damage. <laughs> Precision ranger, I'll baby. Pray. You get around behind him as his focus is who clearly profoundly on uh, the fire, you slip past him and it, he turns to look at you. He doesn't have the spear ready. It's in one hand. All he can do is kind of just like put it as a little bit of bar in the way to stop your 
I don't know you from getting a good grab on him or anything, but you're not going for that. Well, you're, you get a profoundly square punch. Right. Right. <laughs> right, right. to the jaw. Yeah. Sap. Oh, bonk. Oh, it was a sap strike. Yeah, it's a sap oh, strike. Whoa. So it that makes, makes like the wiffle bat noise when you hit people with it. <laughs> 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 it's like the aluminum weapon yeah. there, across the face. As you strike him, his head cracks to the side, and the spear tumbles out of his hand and just clatters down the stairs towards John. And he kind of loses his footing and collapses, not all the way down to the ground. That's a 16 damage. <laughs> he's, he's taking some, he's already been critically fire rained. Um, <laughs> And he drops down to his knees for a moment and just throws up his hands at the universal, like, I am no longer coherently defending myself. <laughs> Position of surrender. Wordlessly. Got a, got a pair of manacles <laughs> just for him. Clack, as clack. He is. Well, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Whew. That was... An impressive level of player character confidence. Wow. <laughs> you don't see that happen too often. This went great. I know. Um, could, could, retrieve his weapon, go back, retrieve my weapon. Could, but just in the span of a moment, the uh, the battle starts and ends nearly as quickly as one man could not have any chance of holding off the group of five of you. But you uh, bring the manacles down, which in his current kind of dazed <laughs> status, uh, he has two health, <laughs> if anyone is curious. Pretty dazed. Mm -hmm. uh, you would easily be able to uh, shackle behind him as you had the first of the goons downstairs. Take his weapons off of him. Um, so. Which you would have uh, really just a short bow. He actually does not have like even a, a knife or a dagger of any kind on hmm. him. Uh, it looks like the armor he clearly had to have had on already, uh, but it looks like he just grabbed the quiver, slung the short bow over his shoulder, and grabbed his spear, and went to go see what was happening, see what he could do. Uh, but knelt down as he is, manacled as you're collecting your weapons and you're taking the things off of him. He kind of blinks the stars out of his eyes for a moment. That looks up to you. You ever stop to think about what you're doing for the city at all? Why come here? What have we done? We fed the poor. We kept people living. We didn't know where the next meal would come from. I, I got to say, I'm really curious about that. Where, where are you getting all this meat from? Certainly not your life savings. Does that matter? Well, I am curious. Is, I'm, as well. I'm, I'm sure it's that... It's not stolen, if that's what you're after. In... Well, I mean, and? What is it, donated? I mean, no, 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 meat's it's, expensive. It's, Normally you distribute grain in times of famine. It's it's charity. I, I gave the mate gold. That's besides the point. Where are you getting the pigs? Where are you getting the meat? <laughs> also, you're an oath breaker and you abandoned your post that and the guard captain's very mad at you. That I don't care about. I've done tenfold more good for the people of Corvosa in the past few days here than I would have following the orders of Citadel Volshevik. Or anyone within its walls. Yeah. Or you, for that matter. He's got the point, but you're still avoiding the question. Why does it? It's rightfully important. There are still some ships getting into the harbor. Sure, there aren't many. There are still outlying farms. Uh, there is some stock. If you're getting meat, does that mean we can get more butcher's meat and feed more people, right? Instead of just this one little shop up here shoved in the corner that only these people know about? We've served everything we've been able to get. The supplies dwindled to a trickle, sure, but we're not, we haven't charged a soul who stepped in the door. Uh, I said it's a charity case. These poor folk have nowhere else to turn. They came to us, to all worlds meet, and we fed them. We fed them, we fed their families, we kept them alive! I, I, I'm... I mean, Aunt D Darren, I D D don't get me wrong. I, I understand that we, we kind of work for them now, but honestly, I, I kind of feel where, where he's coming from. He, he's just doing what, what you've been trying to do all day, which is, which is feed your family. You don't get to just and abandon you a, your you post a, a once voice. you think you have better ideas. You hear a voice shout out from below you. You're right above the storefront in this break room here. What in the hell? Where are you, you vagrant? Come out and face justice. 
The guard ain't gonna help us. We can fend for ourselves. And the uh, sergeant kind of looks up at the group of you. Friend of yours? I don't know. I'll go take a look. I'm going to go with him. Oh, badges on. Don't forget. entrance was rather public. Maybe someone took offense. Well, if they took offense, the guards will deal with it. <laughs> of course. Of course they would. The only way they know how. And uh, as you go down the stairs, you can see that there are a group of about a half dozen people. Uh, half in, half out of the front door of the storefront that have moved in. Most of them aren't wearing armor. One of them has like a kind of patched, ragged, thick suited chain mail with a couple of holes in it. One of them's got some ill-fitting leather armor that looks like it's homemade. Uh, and it looks almost a spitting image of what you'd come across in the alley the other day, armed with an assortment of chef's knives and rakes and small billy clubs. Um, and the group of them all in the, all in the door Seeing, obviously, the two cowhammer boys who just left there in the storefront. Seeing Reth come down. They go, take a step forward. And then see the gun on your back. And they take a step back. <laughs> and with Reth as well. John's coming down as well. What? Now, the only vagrants here is going to be the ones who broke the law and left their posts. You see the manacles? You see this badge? I'm trying to enforce the law, not break it. The meat's still here. You're they welcome. ain't done nothing wrong. They've just been feeding us. That's, we'll take the meat. That isn't... John is going to put on the most charming smile that he can muster up right now. That isn't... Right now, that isn't for discussion for you. It's... Was the god. This is leave it to be. We don't want any more high tensions, any more fighting. And you got this uh, bit of space here, because even from the hall you're in, even if you come forward, the door leads immediately to the storefront counter. Yeah. So it's not like you're... There's no way you'd be face-to-face with six dudes that could really position themselves around you. Uh, but all the people who've come here are... Like relatively well built, largely look like they might be dock workers or warehouse staff, porters. Uh, they clearly have taken the time to scrabble together what they could and then come back. And you can see clearly in defense of this place. Uh, maybe a diplomacy check there. I understand. Um, turns out John's not great at diplomacy, it's an eight. You want me to assist? With, with an eight, I, can, I, I think can that's assist. gonna help, son. There's, are you like, are you coming towards the storefront here I'm as you're just, talking? Here? Yeah, just, I'm, just, yes, just so, walking. So you're towards. like up towards the counter, and then three of them kind of fan out around the front of the counter, and uh, one of them with a big billy club in his hand comes around the side of the counter. So there's some open space, like five feet or so between the two of you. We look straight at you. We don't need nothing from the Corvos and Guard. They ain't done nothing for us. They ain't never done nothing for us. Queensman ain't gonna help us now. Oh, They've proven just, that much. You proving it. This is I'm going, going well. to just take well, the bad. Why, and just why throw don't it you away go out then. there and help them? Uh, I, and you, you guys can, he's not quiet. You guys can hear this up top. So and, and, I'm gonna grab the sergeant and I'm gonna be like, no. look, it's gonna get real bad down there unless you help listen, us talk these people down. We don't want anyone else. We just listen, want you. Listen, sir, I just take the badge, toss it. I know what you're talking about. I understand this. I'm not Corvosan. I've come from a small village. I, we starved. I understand you're afraid. But right now, these men have done things that, honestly, I don't even understand myself, but they have done terrible things that have set back the city and threatened your lives in the long run. And uh, up top, the sergeant looks up at you. Why? Why would I dig you out of the hole you've made for yourselves? Because it, they're not going to win this fight and no one else should have to suffer. And, and because if you do, and, and if you're willing to talk to us a little bit more, we, um, we might be willing to, uh, to, 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 make, to make a deal with you so that you can continue doing what you're doing. No, he goes back. They can stay. So about uh, how close are they to me? Uh, depends. Where are you going? That's up entirely the up doorway. behind him. Doorway. So they're like across the counter from you. You got like 10 feet of space to the nearest guy. If you're kind of behind the doorway of the, yeah. like just in the, in, the, in the mouth of it, basically, you got a decent amount of space. Okay. No I'm one's not, right up. I'm not even going to put my hand on my yeah, gun. No, no one's even like right up on you. You still have a, like a, a square of space between you and this, this guy who's talking to you. Uh, with the sergeant. <sighs> What? You parade me down there before them in manacles and think this will help your cause? No, 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 you no, no, can no. talk them down. They trust you. If you care anything about these people, like what you've said, you'll prevent this damage. And he turns and just and, and then, spits and, a and, mouthful of blood on the floor. And, and then I might be, be, be able to help you f- fake your death. And looks what? back up. It just kind of grins this bloody smile at the group of you. Because think about it. It's trying to trickle down his mouth. Th- think about it. If the guard don't, don't know you're alive anymore, they, they won't care 
what you are. Are and you then, seriously talking about this in front of me? And then you can go about your business and do what you want for the people and, and, and no one will bother you. You're insane. N- no, I'm not. Rafa holds a lot less weight when your own friend is talking back on I, it. I don't care. He, he... And so down below this uh, front grunt here, well, then why? What are you doing? You trying to rob the place? You want some purse? They ain't got one. Not one of us is giving the lick a coin. What I was told, made to understand, is that them being here threatens the cities and threatens its synergy. Oh, it threatens the queen's grip, I'm sure. Us not being beholden to the crown in the castle for our next meal for our kids at home. Listen, I, I'm an idiot when it comes to all this. You can clearly see the dumbfounded expression on my face, right? I'm just trying to do what I think is right. I'm trying to survive just as you are, and this is the only way I can. And, uh, Reth, they don't really seem like they're taking kindly to this, and, like, they are kind of surrounding the counter and getting a little closer and pushing in here. This this well, doesn't look like it's going a good direction for you right now. I tell you what. We came here for one man, and we have him. I will take the manacles off of this man and that man and all the men in the back, and they're welcome to keep running this business. But... A guard abandoned his post, and that's who we're here for. You know, they were all guards, right? I thought it was... He was no, a sergeant, and he, he took, took the, the rest of the whole Kalheimer boys. Okay. They're all guards. No, I, I thought it was a guard and, like, his group yeah, of Yeah, it was people. a sergeant and his squad. Okay, sergeant and guards. So, yeah, they, they are all guards that have all deserved Ah. D- well, never mind, then. <laughs> I that. thought it was one Yeah, person. so I was like, I feel like you misunderstood this a little bit. It's been a week, so, like, yeah. I'll give you a point of clarity on that one. Well, if that's the case, look, all these men, they broke the rules and they abandoned their post, taken resources and taken their weapons. You don't like it and I don't like it, but we have to uphold at least something here. The The food ain't leaving. You can take the food. We're not ruining the business. We're just taking the guards back. I'll make me diplomacy. I will certainly make a diplomacy for you. Shot at talking him down here. That's a twelve. Better. <laughs> I did roll an eleven. And with a twelve, <laughs> we're so bad at this. You uh, up bust. top can hear them trying to plead. You can hear the the grumbles kind of growing, and the mob. You, you, you know the mob mentality is forming mm-hmm. down there. there. Your boys downstairs are not doing hot, and you don't know how much longer it's going to be before Derek, someone takes a swing. Look at me, I I swear, I swear by Torag and and everything I I hold sacred that if if you if you want to protect this city, and then that's really your intention, I'm I'm not going to stop you. I I just don't want anybody <laughs> who, who's innocent to get hurt. All right, I'm not having any of this. Darren, stop. No, you stop. We're not going and creating more treason in this city. This and you, if you're not willing to help, you can be quiet. And uh, I'm going to punch him in the face. <laughs> I'm going to get in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Maybe a reflex save. Hard. Or maybe like a... Hmm. I guess yeah, probably like Acrobatics? A re- re- maybe... I guess it's re- reaction time. So I feel like reflex save probably is the most accurate. I was kind reflex of expecting save. this, reflex actually. Reflex save against your, like, class DC or your... Sure. It's probably the easy. This is what I'm going to go with. That's a I two. am going to... These are totally useless Hero to me. Hero points, eh? Ooh. Uh-huh. The, 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 these are not useless. Two of slough. 28. Uh, that's that's going to be a, a, a 15. Uh, class DC is 17. 15. You will try to impose yourself here, but Darren throws this pretty quickly. And uh, in a flash, knocks Sergeant Van Kaskirk into the ground. Uh, you talking treason does not help our situation this, here. The entire I, city, it doesn't help our I, situation. I, you need to rethink about what you're actually doing here, what you're doing by wearing that I, badge. I, I swore to, to come here to, to, to help the city and the people. If, and, and, if he's helping the people, then I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw him in, in jail where he could be a- executed. We can talk about this later. We need to get him back, and certainly the mob outside isn't helping. Uh, actually, I, I, I really I, I really think you just you just kind of hurt our cause because because he could have calmed them down. The he wasn't floor, going this to. This break room would have windows. Yes, this the, the front of second story has windows, much like the storefront down below it. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't lead to like a landing or anything, and they are second story windows, but it does have them. Um, if is there a way I can can I if I jump out of a window? Does it land us in an area that it that is not directly visible to the front of the store? 
So your options are you could jump, I guess, into like an alley. Alley on the side of the side, building. Or the pig pen on the western sure. side, basically, where you can go. Um, so alley, same like your best shot. You, you throw open the window on the eastern side here. And uh, there would be at least like a support or a gutter nearby that you could attempt to use to climb down. You don't need to literally leap out of a second story window. This is like an urban center. We need, we have drainage and things. Um, so uh, d I'm d d just throwing Sergeant McCaskey out there. I'm going to jump after him if he does that. I mean, I'm jumping after him too, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got to get him out. You dump him out of a second can, story window. Can I try to beat him down to catch his fall? Like With acrobatics, faster? yeah. I mean, he's uh, you, Darren's taking the time to like get the window open and stuff here. So as you see what's going, you could definitely like force. He's got a finagle, an uncooperative body. He's not unconscious yet, but an uncooperative body to the window. You could definitely go out first. That, that, that's what I want to do. Um, and as they're organizing this now, the bottom floor is Rhett's talking. Uh, the one that's up around the side of the county here with this club, Kyle looks across. I have an honest guardsman. You're gonna come in here and fight them? You can fight every one of us! And he's gonna step up to go to take a swing towards John. That'll be initiative. I what guess. are you. What is your response to this? They're clearly like. I'm just gonna take it. That's my question. Like, are we going yeah. to initiative or are you just gonna yeah, let this just... dude hit you? Because, like, it's a situation where they can't all, like, dogpile you, really. Yeah. And... I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna look at him. Like, I really don't want to do this. Really don't want to fight right now. Rez, do you want to fight? Not particularly, but I ain't leaving this door. Correct. So it'd be initiative, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's initiative. Um, well, what he, there, he's, he goes, I'm, if you just let him hit you. Yeah. I'm reaching for the, uh, the, the sap that I have. Reaching for the sap. If you just let him clock you, you're going to take three points of bludgeoning damage. He just bonks you with this. And you just, you clearly just let him do it. Yeah. You make no move to fight him back or anything. He just sort of looks at you. So you know what the man's conviction is, right? You um, don't back down. I understand. I like this about you. You're scared about your family, right? I've clearly got my hand on my Yeah, you sap. got your hand on your sap. But uh, if you're and talking to him, he... John's he, not even making a move for a weapon. He doesn't say nothing. He's still just standing there. Like, his, his club up. What do you know about having to make a living? You're guard. I show him my, my hands. They're obviously callous from years of working in fields. Just, I've scrapped for a living. We've starved to winters. I've seen friends. I've seen family die from starvation. It's terrifying. I understand. What I don't understand is what is they getting their meat? If I can figure that out, we can probably make something work. But right now, these men had a duty, and they failed to do that duty. Look, if all you're after is information, I don't know. You got a devil's way of, uh, of fishing for it. I'm a point. They escort. That one right there beside me. He drew on me first. I tried. We tried to talk. Look, they escort. What cup pieces of livestock they can get in across Northbridge each morning. That's why they're able to do this. They got the weapon and the muscle to protect it. And the shop ain't far. Why does that matter? Why you care so much about where a couple of pigs are coming into the city from? Because if there's a source of foods and anyone can go out and get it. The farms, the wilderness, whatever they're getting the food, another butcher shop, you or any other trained butcher can do it. I know you're not the Look, it butcher. ain't been once and it ain't been twice. The Cowhammer boys had to fight off a couple of men trying to uh, trying to take their, their food from them. And you're afraid of fighting off men for food for your family? Are you that big of a coward? No. You're not willing to fight for the food for your family? You're doing it right now. Well, of course we would. But that's after the... After the first, second day, them hand this stuff out. Ain't no one's gonna step to them anymore. We knew what they was doing. And they was coming in, uh, cutting this up, handing out cuts to everyone. Each according to their need. So now... Penance to Abadar. And you're unwilling to learn to do that yourself. I ain't got a farm. I ain't got no livestock to bring forth. Neither did they, and they found it. 
Like we said. What do you need? What do you need to go get your own livestock? Find a butcher to cut the, it. One of the other people behind the counter, uh, just uh, a woman, calls out, Wait, food! Like, now, obviously. That's the discussion here. There's nowhere to buy it, and hardly any of us have got the coin to buy it now. There's nothing coming into the town. I'm going to pull out a sack of tin gold and just, can you buy it with that? As you hold this out, the guy in front is going to like snatch for it immediately and just, just take it. We're not trying to starve y'all. We're trying to make sure that these people aren't just allowed to run rampant and do whatever they want. Hands it back to the guy behind him who opens it up and starts looking through it. And the rest of them, their attention is turned from this to the sack. They have definitely There's redirected. There's still a pile of meat on the counter, right? There's like, still some, yeah. There's still out. some colors they were handing out. They're still there. Um, and they're looking through this sack. And meanwhile, up top. <laughs> Dumping <laughs> out the window. Arden, make me an <laughs> athletics check. Oh, man. <clears throat> it's not super difficult to uh, make your way down this gutter. Mm. Unless you roll really bad. Uh, hey, I, you know what's real uh, not difficult? What, 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 what happens is he's he's really, really nervous for this guy, and uh, he forgot that he had uh, beef juice on, on his hands. And so when he goes to uh, to, to grab the pipe, oh, no. he, he f f fumbles the entire pipe, grabs it, and the entire thing comes down with him. You might... You might say what did that, you uh, roll? A one? Oh, okay. You might say that Arden uh, falls like a rock. Yeah, and oh. you, you, as you as you do go to grab this gutter, you, you try to get a hold of it, and uh, yeah, it does not support the weight of an entire person. And it kind of crackles in its bracket, and you see Arden fall and just <laughs> slap into the uh, ground. Uh, oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Everything just everywhere. like that. Just like that. That's what happened to Arden. You had one. Uh, um, uh, you take... I mean, luckily, I, would, I, I, I actually, I, I, have, I, I do have st 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 steadying stone, so, so that, that, that does help. What does that do? It, it gives me pl pl plus two. Two. To, to, to the roll falling. I rolled a one well, on. Well, you rolled a nat one, so <laughs> you definitely <laughs> critically <laughs> fell. Um, you're going to take, you fall on a second story window, you're going to take ten points of bludgeoning <laughs> damage and land prone on the ground. And as they're looking through the bag, you hear a body fall in the alley immediately <laughs> outside nine the points. door. You just hear boom, and you hear Arden. Ah! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like that sounds like an imp. <laughs> That's. I was about to say. Am Several of the people this? near the door would immediately like. What was his turn? Where are you, Flabla? Which group? I was. You uh, I was uh, downstairs, and I was by the uh, stairway last I checked. So you're, you're kind of just like in between you. You're in the hallway. The you're like in the yeah. back. You know, yeah. you figure walking up in this isn't going to make. Yeah, I was just better. like, I kind of want to. So don't... probably not. But you would yeah. see everyone's attention turned to the door. I I, I take uh, a peek around the corner just so I can see what happened outside, and, uh, and that's like all the way around. They're like they can't see it either. Yeah. Um, it it was the pipe. I, I I'm just going to stealthily trust peek around the corner and see what's going on. Uh, you can see John get hit I, in the head. Right. And uh, uh, rope. I, I, <laughs> Plan R. This is a terrible idea. So, so you're pulling out the rope. Arden, you're fine, I imagine. Injured, but fine. I, 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 I got down. It wasn't the way I intended. You would be readying your rope and you would see a uh, couple of people come out into the street around this corner and look into the alley and see Arden and look up to the window and see you up there tying a rope off. You two as well, the bottom two, the ones at the back of this crowd move around and around towards this alley on the side looking towards something. That's you were so confident for the first 30 minutes of this stream. Social encounter. <laughs> Jeez. Social encounter with nobody trained in diplomacy. Yep. We are good guards. I'm trained in diplomacy. Oh, you're bad at rolling. I'm bad. I'm bad at <laughs> trained, but bad. So what are any of you doing at this? <sighs> I don't know what happened. Um, I heard a thump. Yeah, you heard a thump. You see some people go out around What's and happened? some attention What's, turns. What that? I would imagine something Sound like fell. a rock hitting the ground. Hmm. And even this guy who took the pouch with his club doesn't say anything. Just look at both of you, and then also kind of moves towards the door. The whole of this mob. Oh, we have the same look on our face. Yeah, yeah. we're moving yeah. with them. We're going part of the mob. You guys are also coming. <laughs> <laughs> you, part of the mob. You've been high grade. Welcome to the mob. High five. Yeah. High five. High Welcome five. to the team. Yeah. 
<laughs> I am actually going the opposite direction. I'm going to sneak around back and try to avoid notice as much as possible. You know, you know there are several back ways out of here that lead yeah. out into the western alley and into like the pig pens. Like it's definitely you can just go another yep. direction. Absolutely no one's going to see you. No, like it's, you only a stealth roll. There's no way anybody can see you go back to the killing floor into the processing section. Did, did, did I just actually fall into the pig pen? Are there pigs you're here? You're opposite side. No, you're in the alley. Uh, the opposite the pig pound, the eastern side. You're, you're and, between uh, the between two buildings. Okay, and, uh, got it. From nearby here building. to here, like this way. Okay. It's just this is on top of this. Gotcha. And so uh, you s- up top, Darren, see this mob kind of coming around see, and sort of see John and <laughs> surrounding <laughs> Arden as he picks himself up, ragtag weapons in hand, and you see John and Rev coming around as part of this mob <laughs> in the back. Everybody just oh, has a what oh, happened face. Everyone equally confused in the group. Um, so the two of you would be able to see Arden picking himself off of the ground. You would have a mob between you and him. And you would also clearly see Darren with a rope in the upper window. Probably equally confused, <laughs> I would imagine. You, uh... I, I, I tried to fix the the, the, the plumbing. It, it didn't go as yeah, planned. A, gutter, a broken gutter kind of hanging off the side of the building. That sounds about right to me. It, leaning it, against the other, but like now leaning against the building across the alley for support. It's, it's okay. I'm going I'm to fix it. <laughs> right. Right. Everyone just, everyone, <laughs> right. Get back inside the building, put the rope back. I, 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 really, I'm going to, I'm going to fix it. He's. Gonna start picking up the gutter and, and, and putting it back. You know, this is actually a really awesome distraction. I'm just gonna pick up the stuff and go off the back of the building. <laughs> Sir, are you a, are you drunk this time of day? No, no, no I'm I, somebody called a, a, a plumber. Someone lodged complaints against this man. We can arrest him. <laughs> hey, literally any one of you. Anyone, <laughs> someone just lodged a complaint of it, so we can I'm, arrest I'm, him for I'm, drunk I'm, and disorderly I'm just, conduct. I'm just, I'm just fi- 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 fixing the gutter. No one takes it. And so you uh, you haul the barely conscious Sergeant Van Kassen again out with the flobbling towards the back and just, you know, out the other side of the back as the two of you uh, collect your druid and uh, manacles. the oh. mob. Hey, Flobble. With their You and me of, sneaking again. Uh, I was, I, I, as he, I see him coming around the corner, I'm like, so what happened? I didn't see it. I am not entirely sure. <laughs> quick, Probably best I don't quick, ask that. Quick, quick repair. <laughs> But uh, mm. these six that have come in with their weapons, they're kind of the, the bigger sorts. You can see out in the street, there is a decent amount more that have gathered around, forming kind of like a, a, a small scattered crowd around all worlds meet here. Um, the less physically capable members of the crowd from earlier, uh, wives, children, infirm, elderly. But there is a decently sized crowd out here watching. Uh, the two of you would be able to push through this mob to get to Arden so the three of you were together in the, the alleyway here as the uh, confused uh, front henchman here. Weapons still in hand. Really just not sure what the hell's going on at this it's point. The same. <laughs> can, can, can Almost I, makes me feel can, it's can, a guilty. Can, can, I, can, can I fix the gutter now? No. But, but right. I broke it. Unless you can fix the part ten feet up, I'm not really sure how you're gonna be able to do anything from the ground. I, I, could, I could climb back up. All right. I so don't trust you climbing back up. Looking over at the guy that was handed the coin, will that be enough for y'all to be okay for a couple days at the very least, while we sort this out and sort that out, pointing at the gutter and <laughs> that <laughs> sorts that out as well, pointing at the druid. Look, I just I fell. It happens. Ah, uh, what the hell kind of guards you lot are. Well, I'm, I, I, not I'm, I'm, I'm not a guard. I'm not a guard. I'm a hunter. I, I live here. <laughs> it's a temporary position until the city is back to stable. I, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> we're not even called guards by the people we're working for. They kind of just move back a bit out of the way, giving the group you some space to get back on to the road here and away from all worlds made should you choose to just leave oh. we have more people to get and i want to at least see what they had upstairs you do have five more unconscious def- uh deserters is it four in the bill uh, four more unconscious one of them's deserters. dead right four more unconscious deserters one corpse um mm-hmm. i hope that one will be going the out the back door here. 
Yeah. Um, you have Sergeant Van Kaskerken, but you... You do need the rest of the deserters. He's, he's like your primary Do we, objective. though? <laughs> we do. Really? I'm gonna like, start literally, dragging. I recall our mission being get this guy. If you get other people, that's fine, too, but get he this guy. He is like your main bounty. He's yeah. the only one that you'd actually I'll, be... I'll, I'll, like, I'll literally the only one they were going to pay us for, too. Get, a, literally. get all get all the deserters together, get a rope tied around all their waists. It's a nice I, little I, deserter train. I, I don't think we should, actually. They broke the law. I'm going to go figure out where the hell they put your gold to while I'm at it. But that was for charity. The gold would be easily found charity. in the guy's pocket in the uh, in the killing floor of the butchery. I said I'd been literally immediately like, getting gone and stashed anywhere. That was seconds before everything <laughs> fell apart. So it'd be in that dude's pocket. Um, so you'd get your eight gold back. And I'm going to go upstairs and see if they have any documentation or what they are doing. Documentation. Where they were buying their pigs. Are, are you going to... Go, go with Rath, or are we going to stay down here? Like, what, what are we doing? Well, I was going to walk you with whoever back. to you take were... him back. Are you, are you there? No, you were with Rath. I thought you and I left. Yeah, you guys are not there. Yes. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I think I think Rath might have already left if he hasn't, or not Rath, but Darren, Darren has already left no, I, I, if I he mean, hasn't made an appearance down here yet. I mean, I mean where, where, where did Rath go? Rath went upstairs. What, what I'm did... going to get these guys situated get something to throw of his uh, eviscerated corpse and well, are, are you gonna go looking for something do you need help you can go help us uh, unless you know how to tie a very good knot i i, I do actually was well, you're gathering everybody in the killing floor which is a rather grim place to do the business uh there is still a decent amount of meat back here it was getting fairly late in the morning uh there isn't much uh but the prep table where they had thrown like half of a carcass at you did also have a wide array of larger cuts and sections uh, that were being prepared. Uh, and on a table nearer to the door in the northern end of the room, uh, things that had already been filleted and sectioned out and were just in the packaging process before they'd brought them around to the front end here. So is there is there another room we can take all these people out of? Can, can we take pass out, out the, killing room the rest the of the meat? There is the pig pen. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's like, this out there is... building. Yeah, you, you, your buildings. Uh, there is one more. I, there is one more. Um, there is that room to the side there on the offshoot of the hallway, which is the meat locker itself, uh, with a few rows of hooks on either side of the row, room, and then two more rails in the center uh, where the full carcasses would be stored before being brought to the killing floor. It's a butchery. Yeah, it's Outside a butchery. Outside of the break room, like the upstairs chambers, no part of this establishment is particularly nice. Um, so I'm removing the dead corpse out of the out of the killing room, at least having these four tied, and I'm going to go out to the mob, and if they're still, I'm sure they're still a mob, and to try to get like two or three of the guys to come in to show them the meat. I'm just going to step them through. I don't know how to butcher a pig properly, but I've uh, seen it done. I, I, I do. And this one apparently does know how to butcher a pig properly. So and show them, it's like, this is this is the best we can offer. Like, there's still meat here as long as someone is willing to cut it and prepare it and hand it out. Um, there would be... Yeah, there would there would be two places. There is the stuff that's being prepared that just arrived this morning in the killing floor. Uh, but additionally, in the meat locker, there's not nothing uh, because they do get occasionally a little bit of livestock in during the evenings as well that they prep and salt to store overnight. So inside the meat locker at the uh, like a, a large storage uh, box at the north end, there would also be a litany of various cuts of uh, actually pork and beef and etc uh, that were looking like the ones that they that are packaged ident identically to the ones that have been being handed out at the counter uh, it looked like they probably go through all of this first and then whatever they're prepping they were get, they were close to getting into the fresh mornings cuts uh, but everything, and this could be verified by the packets that were still there on the counter in the storefront that have been handed out so far, had been salted and waited overnight. Uh, so you can show them both of these things. Yep. Um, um, wh wh while he's doing that, I want to quietly talk to the, the men now that they're awake. 
What? The uh, the cowhammer boys? Yeah. They're super not awake. You beat them unconscious. I have been dragging their corpses around. Can, 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 I, can I try to re- revive them? <laughs> Sorry, bodies. Uh, if you have healing magic or 10 I, minutes I, to do the medicine check, I, yeah. I, I have healing magic. Because they're super... De- you can either like... I could just do a, a level one and just, just get them back up. You only have level one. You're only level two. No, no, no. What I mean is a one action to just get get them all. I mean a three action to just get them all back up. Oh, like uh, the pulse? Yeah. I guess you have everyone shackled at this point. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. You, you and they're got, all tied together. That's true. Point. Uh, so with your three action heal, and uh, that, that that magic would be enough to bring the four surviving Cowhammer boys back to consciousness and various... They, they, they get max. States of They all get eight. Including me, because I, I kind of needed it, actually. Yeah, you and uh, John, if you're missing anything. Oh, yeah, I got hit. Would also get eight points of health back. Uh, uh, Rats upstairs, we'll get to you in a sec. Yeah. And I'm hoping that'll kind of make the, the crowd feel a little better, because they, they see us, me healing them and get, getting them back up. Well, I mean, that there's that, but there's also the, like, bound and shackled thing, so... And the previous beating from five minutes ago, no, so, no, like, no, it's... I, I meant the crowd. The mob. Oh, you're bringing the mob in while you're healing these guys back up. Bring in a few of them in to show yeah, them. Yeah. Not the whole mob, to show them a few of them. Oh, I was like, this is an interesting decision that you could make, I suppose. Uh, but a, a couple of them to show them other things are and show you healing them up and that they're down there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, at this point, you've paid them a pretty decent sum, and they're not they're not happy about it. But I mean, ten gold's a lot of freaking money. It's a lot of money. Um, there are a lot of them, but that's that's probably more money than many of them have ever seen uh, at once. Don't spend it all in one place. And um, you would direct them to all these uh, the various cuts and the meat that's back there already, and like here is what's left. Do so, what you can. So, so what what were you guys doing? Uh, upstairs, Reth is looking through the break room, which also attaches to an office at the southern end of the building, uh, which is a, a fair sight smaller, uh, with a large single desk on the eastern end. The desk having a bedroll literally laid out atop it with several sheets and pillows, it having been kind of transformed into a makeshift bed frame uh, by nature of necessity. Uh, and that's kind of driven doubly home by the chamber pot that is tucked underneath it. This desk has not been used for business for quite some time. Uh, but on the western side, there is a smaller table with a set of three ter- uh, chairs around it that looks like what he was actually using. Uh, to conduct any kind of business here. There are several papers strewn about, uh, one of which is pinned up into the corner of the desk by a very finely made and like exceptionally exquisite silvered dagger uh, with a coil of a surprisingly kind of thick silver wire running up around its handle to drape around the, uh, the pommel that's almost carved into the metal like it were the facets of a gemstone. Uh, the blade itself is slightly curved and hooked uh, with a small section uh, cut out, a, a waving, almost elliptical shake, uh, shape from the back of the blade near the tip. It's a very finely made knife. Uh, and it's it very much stands out among the relative simplicity of everything else about this room and this entire operation, honestly. Well, I suppose that I'll take that because it's potentially evidence for something he was doing. It seems out of place. Uh, aside from that, did any papers, receipts, w- location of where livestock was being purchased, any information at all? Most of the papers that were on here, uh, none of them are related to any sort of business. None of them tell anything about where the meat come from uh, came from. The one that is pinned to the table is actually appears to be a letter from a lover. <laughs> to Sergeant Rinkaskiken himself, uh, that he is stapled there with this knife in clear view. Uh, most of the rest of it is just personal correspondence. Uh, some of it is old Corvus and Guard missives and uh, orders that he had, had taken before, things he brought with him that don't appear to apply to this literally at all. Uh, none of it is, it's all odd, perhaps none of it's useful. Uh, the main, I guess, thing that you'd find that would really give you any kind of indication as to the state of this or his mind is that behind the desk there would be like a palace of empty mugs and bottles and small kegs. And even the, the whole side of this room would smell fervently of stale alcohol. 
Uh, the man has clearly been drinking a pretty significant amount. Um, Fair enough. But honestly, other than the knife itself, there's like nothing useful information or value-wise you really see in this room. Uh, he would, in the desk, have a trio of small tinctures, uh, which would actually be labeled as minor elixirs of life, coming from a proper alchemist with proper labeling. Labeling. Uh, the label would actually be something that you would recognize from the Corvus and Guard armory. It seems like he would have taken these with him uh, when he deserted. But yeah, aside from that, nothing. Uh, I, 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 I had a, a thought. Um, you, you all want to want to help your families and help the city, right? For just either staring daggers into your eyes or like avoiding looking at you. No one responds, though. Did, because you know that. Is there anything that would make you want to c c come help us? You could get paid a and help your family, and you could actually help do, do good for the city and make sure that the guards weren't weren't You're hurting a damn anybody. Guard. I I'm not actually. Do you came here with them. They're, you do realize that they are deserters. N no, these these are just people who want. B b bread and and stuff for their family. Well, just take us back to the damn citadel. And let us hang. I, I I don't I don't want you to hang. You talking about the god or the mob? The well, angry mob. I I am talking. But she's one of the cowhammer boys. Yeah. She's got. You know. No, those are definitely god. Because the way they fought was trained. What what I'm trying to say is. Do do, do you do you really want to help the the city, or did you desert just to desert? Why? He just kind of shake his head. You, you, cl you, you came here to do something. What, what, what was it? Another one of the people there who hadn't spoken yet, who had just fought in that final encounter, the one who'd been hiding behind the door, is a kind of thin, jittery man. Uh, skin almost a bit yellow, kind of pallid, sunken cheeks. Uh, he definitely looks notably physically smaller than uh, and less, uh, well, uh, less physically fit than the rest of the guards here. Uh, possibly belying why he had gone with the hide behind the door and bushwhack him approach to combat. It was a good hit. I. What what kind of question are you, you, you asking us? What even, what even is this? What are we supposed to say? You're supposed to tell me the truth, and I uh, I'll try to do the right thing. The guard wasn't gonna do nothing. We 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 could follow the guard's orders, head out in the street, swords in hand, and and die to the mob, or go down swinging, or or, or kill. Half of them is there, just rioting because this, 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 this Iliosa's suddenly got the throne now. Or we could leave and do anything else. Uh, ob obviously, the, the, what, what kind of choice even is that? But, but, but why, why did you choose to, to come help people instead of just, just leaving? And the, uh, the other guy just kind of, it's like, he's got his arms shackled and he's bounced. He's kind of shoulders over. Shut up, Carallo. Miss. There has to be a reason. You don't just make a decision like like that. If you just want to leave, you leave. I just don't think they're talking. They're exercising their right to remain I, silent. I, I'm not ar arresting them, so they don't they don't have to do any of that. They're arrested. What? What? Why? Because I arrested them. But 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 we're not. Oh, the point. Wrath, I imagine, would come down with literally just the dagger. You got the papers on the off chance you're missing something. Even uh, not anything. The dagger and the potions because so, they're probably labeled. The, potions. Probably the, potions. the daggers in my bag. Let's me pose this question to you, Zen. Right, so you post a man to watch over over your community overnight to protect from danger to warn. Right, it's on a signal tile of some sort. He abandons his post. The uh, village gets raided. Whose fault is that? The, the people who raided the village. It was the man who could have warned you that they were coming. But there was that th there was no one to warn. It, it, it the was, man was supposed to warn, though. But but they didn't. They they were just supposed to go out and and deal with 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 looters, who who were just hungry and and wanted to f feed their families. Now you know what, Arden. This is a lovely conversation that I have walked upon into. Why don't we have this conversation while we're walking? I like but, that idea. I second that notion. <clears throat> so, so come on, I just bump one of the not hard. Just kind of gets up. We're walking now. At so, this so, point, the uh, the couple of members of this mob outside that you've let in are 
are gathering like armfuls of these packets of meat and uh, bringing them out and literally just casting them into the street. This is about uh, to be expected. Where the mob outside is kind of, at first sort of reticent, but soon like clamoring over each other to get towards this here. Uh, it's devolving somewhat rapidly and leaving does seem like it could potentially be a wise we, idea. We, 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 is, there a, is there like a, a cart, like a man cart? As there big. was that cart out on the loading dock. Yeah, Absolutely. that I can put the corpse in and just cover it and take that with us. Yeah, we're, we're not leaving it. We're not. We're not leaving it. Uh, you could bring that with you. You could haul. You could load it into the cart out back. Um, I mean, you could surely find like a sheet or a curtain or something somewhere yeah. uh, that you could just cast over it and, and haul it with your the rest of the cowhammer boys. The long walk back to Citadel Bolshevik. Which, by the way, two of you are already, if you're assuming that you're heading back to the Citadel. That's where I'm going. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with them. Yep. You're walking through the streets. So nice to be walking with somebody who actually has a sense of job duty about them, Floblin. Let me just say that. I mean, you I'm very devoted to what I do best. sense of job duty. <laughs> <laughs> Professionalism. It's nice to see. Right. I mean, just because I look like garbage, eat garbage, and smell like garbage, doesn't mean I'm not a professional. I have to say, actually, it was a, quite a surprise. <laughs> It's not oh. to me. And uh, and Kasker can at this point is is not like resisting. He's trudging. Oh, he's come too, has you. he? Oh, he was never unconscious. You just like whacked him. He was I, real oh, I was trying to knock him out, but that's fine. Oh, I, well, I just look I just look at wanted to go. No, it's much nicer to have him walk, actually. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I think he's he, if, if you throw him out the window, he's gonna be unconscious for sure. <laughs> um, but he is he is like still not great, but he is he is conscious. He's, okay. he's given up on the, the point of resisting at this point, as shackled as he is. Absolutely no surprise whatsoever that those guard the Citadel have found yes men who will do whatever order they're handed. Oh, but a give it up. a single thought about what it means to themselves, the city, the people, you're sworn to protect. Do not even take the oaths? You I'm, are no. pathetic. You try to get out back on your high horse after hiding behind it when we asked you to talk down those people. We're lucky that they, they haven't gone and been beaten senseless by now. You have any idea how bad my companions are at negotiating? I mean, they're pretty bad. And I'm a goblin. But we're doing our best because people like you refuse to. And that's why you're guards. That's why you're working for Volshevik. You don't need to negotiate. You just need to wade in, sword in hand, and cut your way through whatever problem the queen points you at. Right? Depends. Didn't have to do it with you. Looks down. Hmm. Look. They'll have lots of questions, I'm sure. But... I'll... Your methods are weird, but you don't like talking about them for some reason. And frankly, I'm tired of asking. What? What is there? What? What methods are there even to define the, the specific farms the cows from? 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 Where exactly we find our pigs? I don't know. I don't buy them myself. Well, where, does someone just brings them to you. The pigs are expensive. Livestock is expensive. Who just has a stash of livestock? They're just give away. I. I... I understand you're like doing good. You didn't even think about donated, it. They're donated. All right. Donated by who? By the Arconas. The Arconas? The Arconas. Do I know who the Arconas are? Uh, is this I Katie live here. check? Okay. It said you live here, but it's a noble family. Oh. <laughs> so oh, maybe. Uh, uh, 14. 14. You would probably have heard of them. And for no other reason, they are probably one of the older noble families in Corvosa, which again, in a city that's barely 300 years old total is not a high bar. Um, but, I live in America. But they do... <laughs> <laughs> I live in America. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do... Uh, they, they are somewhat well-known for their regular trade and strong tri tribes with uh, Vudra. They are one of the major importers of Vudrani goods, which are mm. somewhat exotic in the city, um, but in, in decently high demand. And they're not... Uh, Vudrani goods are not inherently like expensive or high-grade, just things from the nobility either. Um... Floridian terms, think of them as the Mexican supermarket. Okay. Um, that's, it's just not the normal run-of-the-mill Corvos and Chelish kind of thing. Okay. Uh, but you would not know much of them beyond their name. Uh, they are a fairly powerful and well-connected family. Okay. Avocados. It's fascinating. <laughs> they sell avocados. They, sell they import Vidrani avocados. The and, best. Uh, the best avocados. They're expensive. But they're good for you. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> it's the fruit just, version of butter. <laughs> well, he, he continues. And they've taken it upon themselves in the wake of all of this 
to do at least some amount of good for the city. Well, it's quite admirable of them, actually. More than any of you could say. You've you managed think? to shut down a charity. Congratulations. You're proud of yourselves. Your superiors will be, I'm sure. Uh, if you even report to any chain of command. Uh, believe it or not, it's not much of one. Uh, Darren, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Does he have to be awake for us to determine it? He is walking himself. It's very convenient. Check out! Days. <laughs> and attempts to knock him unconscious. And he is just gonna... <laughs> Again. Like did Round did you two. just listen to any... Oh, oh, oh you're gonna carry him, Floblin. And he falls into the dirt. Go ahead, Floblin, pick him up. Oh, cool. Can we catch up to them? <laughs> You want to pick him up pretty, now? Pretty I mean, I could do it with your help. Oh, 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 I see, I see. So I have to, I, th I thought better of you, Floblin. You are being nice and professional. We're walking him back and you just knock him out for no reason? I mean, he wouldn't shut up. Gags exist. They leave the legs still working. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I oh. mean, I, I, I'm just doing what I do. That's how we settle things in goblin history. You know, I can't argue with that. <laughs> Um, How much spare bulk you got, Darren? Uh, what I have is a medicine kit. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, come up. Uh, a little bit of smelling salts, uh, maybe uh, some uh, some salve on his wounds. So you guys, you're taking the route back to Citadel of Lushavik, clearly walking a uh, prisoner that's manacled. Yes, what, what in a guard of, uniform. Yeah, what kind of, so are you, in a, in, he's in a guard he's uniform. He's in a guard uniform. You have some little badges, but he's in a guard uniform. <laughs> yep, yep. What kind of a route are you guys taking here? <laughs> like, is this literally the middle of the main thoroughfare of Midland? Well, I know all the back. He falls unconscious in the middle of the street, and uh... Well, I know all the back alleyways, so I suggest we do that now. I'm not keen on getting jumped by imps Some or goblins. <laughs> so, oh, it's okay. I'm, I'm the only I'm goblin. Probably keen to stick to the main rows. So while you're spending some time tending to Sergeant uh, Bolshevik, then <laughs> the three of you absolutely would have time to catch up <laughs> with the rest of the Cowhammer boys, either walking in their train that I imagine John is leading, or in the wagon. Uh, with the sheet drawn over them behind. They are tied to the wagon. Tied and, to the wagon. And John is pulling the no, wagon. No, this is like a like a horse or donkey drawn is wagon. It, it's fairly it large. That's, okay. I it's, mean, you could do it, but it's gonna be. It's definitely work. It's not. It's not a man cart for sure. <laughs> not intended to be. Counter idea. Tie them to the front. And have no. them pull the. <laughs> <laughs> you had to daze them. <laughs> we could have been far away from these jokers, oh, then but you had to taste them. The horse and but just... this uh, this whole <laughs> caravan would approach as you were making a medicine check. Oh, 23. Okay, not making the problem worse. So we've got to give the critical failure opportunity. Uh, this whole caravan would approach as you were uh, just about getting the sergeant back to. And... <laughs> And you would all, it would, both of these operations, I imagine, are very clearly visible to the other, because you don't have a great place to stop, and he's probably just like on the side of the road, like a I little mean, we're, out we're, of we're sight. We're kind of just going back and And you forward. guys are <laughs> fantastically obvious, like coming oh, yeah. down the street with the entirety of the Cowhammer boys and a wagon. Mm. Uh, oh, good. You know, we, we, we caught up to you. You could have just waited, and we could have put them on the cart. You didn't have to get them back up. Wasn't sure if the mob was going to start burning the place down. It sounded like it was getting oh. violent. I thought it'd be better to get our uh, uh, get our target out. The negotiations were successful. I'm uh, glad to hear. Uh, I'm just I, bouncing gold. I, 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 How much? They have families to feed. At least no one else had to get hurt. I, I, I would like to call a, a, a very short time out. No. I know exactly what you're going to say, and I won't hear it. Y you won't. You don't want to hear what he has to say. Uh, can someone put a gag in him? N oh, no. I got it. Back I take. Up. I take a dirty what? rag. Not from another one of your. Oh, okay. It's actually a rag this well, time. What is? Yeah. What is? I take a dirty rag and stuff it in his mouth. What is wrong with all of you? Do, do, do you all believe a a everything you hear? Can someone put a gag in his mouth? I got a spell. Out <laughs> Did, don't. Well, no. I could ask the same thing because believing everything you hear, you want to hear his side of the story. But... I, I do. That's not our problem. But 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 we don't. He could lie straight out of his teeth. And he doesn't want to tell us his side of the story, well, anyways. Yeah, I, I, he no, might now. No, no, no. I'll pull I, it out. <laughs> Tastes like Hot. goblin, don't it? P you can walk and talk. Where has that been, your ass? Well, if Shut there was up. a. <laughs> 
I didn't see. I didn't have time to get the draw. I know. Can you help with this wagon? I'm is, I'm escorting the sergeant here, and making sure Floblin doesn't get wait, a little wait, bit jumpy again. Who even are you people? I, I literally Where just did guard find you. I, I just off came here. I don't know. Literally off the street. I, literally off the street. I, I am literally just here looking f for my nephew when when this started. He he got he got kind stolen a, away. Go with the flow sort of company we got here. This is. So, pl please, t t tell us why wh wh why you you deserted your post and, and, and you were feeding those those people. Pushing. <laughs> Cart is going. Cart is going. My God. And he's walk. He's he's walking with you. Are now that I think about it, this is probably good punishment for you. What having to put up with this? Group you get of it, imbeciles. You get it. I, I'm I'm really not an an, an imbecile. I'm, I, I'm a druid, and 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 I just want to do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny about all of this now? N n nothing's funny. I, I don't think anything is funny. I, I don't uh, think. Just the way the way Arden said that got me right in the giggly bits. <laughs> Look, Flop was dying over here. <laughs> God, the king died. The news broke out through the streets. At the Citadel Volshevik, around the same time, it seemed to have reached the people of Corvosa. Do you know what our first order was? Quell the riots. Draw your blades. And bring back the peace. Take to the streets and quiet them with steel. That was the first orders given to the Corvosan Guard. Not a single thought for protecting ourselves or the castle or even the people. Just no. Are they a problem? Cut them down. So, what's exactly what happened if those riots continued and got out of hand? We've seen mobs get angry. Well, you think they're going to destroy their own city? They're angry at the castle, yes. and rightfully so. Or think they would start destroying their own city. And killing people in the streets. We saw it happen once, almost. Once you get enough people together, they start pushing and shoving. Some people get stuck under foot, tramples to death. Maybe once... one second of thought should be put for the reason as to their rage. I, I, I actually really only saw them trying to kill guards that, that were already trying to kill them. Oh, no, you do remember the uh, remember the blonde-haired lady that we saved? She was getting uh, assaulted in the streets. Definitely that, a guy. That was a, that I know. Was a man. Yeah. Nick knows. <laughs> okay. Darren misremembers. Uh, that, 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 that was a man, and, and he, oh, he, he was. was a guard. No, he was not he a was, guard. He, he was, was a nobleman. He made the mistake of wearing a nice shirt. And he was assaulted in the street for it. Well, that 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 was that was wrong, but it d doesn't mean that killing y your own populace is right. It doesn't mean killing your own populace is right, but it does mean that Th there are other... putting order back is important. But there's well, a why shouldn't they riot? Why shouldn't they take to the streets? Well, expected in the span of an instant to bend the knee to Queen Iliosa now, to the new crown, to a woman ten years my junior, whose only claim to the throne is a pretty face and low-cut dress. Oh, your Arden is totally behind you on that one. I, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I, I, I think that elders and people who were v voted into power sh should be the ones who are, are in charge. Apparently, they vote for kings over in his place. But I, I, I don't think that so that's it. I think you have something spe specific. What exactly did this Queen Eliosa Zeus rile up the whole populace? Hi, I'm new in town. Same thing she's ever done since she had the ear of King Aedrid. The first time we have a fair and just ruler in this city, for, as you'd hear it in the streets, damn near since we've been independent from Cheliax. And everything's fine and good until this woman comes in and does nothing but shift the weight of the city towards her friends, her group, the nobility. Oh, that's what, he, that, that, that's that, that's what, what he was, he was the saying. The shippers and the rich. Those was running the companies and the docks. The guard, the sable company. Even as part of it, you can see how wrong it is. That would make the general populace very mad. She's never given one thought to the common man of Corvosa. Not one! And you're, again, walking down the street here. So he's just, like, yelling in right. nice broad could, daylight could, could, out. Could, could you, could you keep it around. down? Puts the gag back in his mouth. No, we'll no, talk no. about this festival. Now is not the time for this conversation. Uh, actually, I, I think it might be the only time for this no. conversation. Oh, that's excellent. Let's go have a ride on our hands. Let him draw I, up support in the street. I, that's I, a spectacular. I, I, I don't want to have a riot. back at the four guards behind us. Don't uh, see any of your sail words as the same rag goes in your mouth. 
letting him talk his mouthful is going to start another one. I, I don't. I'm not saying we, he, he he needs to talk. I'm saying that I don't. I don't. I don't want to work for the wrong side. Well, we ain't got much of a choice at the moment. I, actually, we do. No, we're escorting once people you, dressed as guards through the, the street. What's the other side, once you, Arden? All what is the other side? Well, I mean, to be really honest with you, I, I just thought she was really pretty, and I uh, she, she seemed like she was in trouble, and I'm a, I'm a sucker for, for a woman crying. But, At I mean, he's I don't really know anything about this city or the politics or anything that's happened here in, in the past five years, and I don't really have allegiance to either of them. I just want to do what's right because it's it's the right thing to do, and I don't understand why, why you wouldn't. I, At this point... Should I gag him too? No, no it's it's fine. Talk. At, at this point, we're in such a dire straits that they're asking good intended people I, to I, support the guards. I, I really think they, they, they just wanted somebody who, who is a, a sucker. I well, think you need to understand. What is the alternative? Do, do you even think order belongs in a city? Uh, of course I do. Okay, who keeps it? You, the people don't keep it themselves because yes. people themselves keeping order is what's happening right now. I'm, I'm saying that there's a bruise on my face where I got smacked earlier. All I'm saying is that if if we take them back, they're going to kill them. Maybe, but maybe they put them, them in jail. Maybe they have something something else planned. But it happens according to the law. I, I don't. Pardon me, but I, I don't I don't really give two 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 rocks about the law. Oh, my surprise is evident. Do you? I, I care about what's right. Well, what is right for a man who promises to defend the city and then diverts his, deserts his post when things go terribly? I'm trying I, to use this do argument. you think you should be able to leave your post and, and abandon your oaths whenever it's convenient? I, I think he was de defending the city in, in the way that he thought would, would do the most good instead of going out and, and bashing his friends over the head and the friends of his family well, in his community. Defending the city in the way that he thinks is the best. If everyone did that, it's called anarchy. That's what's happening right now. There's no difference. Let me, let me raise you a different question. If the guards hadn't done their job the other night, don't you think those rides would still be going? I, I, I don't know. Because the only reason they stopped is the Hell Knights showed up and made them stop. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I do know about the, the Hell Knights. They're, um, they're evil. Not necessarily. No, no I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that, that's, that, they, that they are. They... Shelly Axe is evil too. They stopped the city from being burnt down to the ground from an I, angry mob. I, I could stop a city from, from being burnt down to the ground too. You all I have to do could not. all I have to do is, is kill everyone in it. Look, the city's still here. They didn't kill anybody. Are, are you kidding me? I think they might have killed a few people, I, I, but I'm pretty sure they, they, they killed kill the whole city. Even if they did, but kill they a did not. Of people. They did not kill the whole city. But but they killed p people who they showed up and the riots stopped. So you're saying that that, that if, so, if I show up and, and shoot a person, then and that stops them from what they're doing, that that's okay? Well, Depends if what they're what okay they is burning doing. down this... Do you think nothing bad happens in a riot? I, People I, were getting attacked. Riots were happening. Stuff was being stolen and damaged. And destroyed. And people were losing their lives. That's what happens in a riot. Not everybody who's protesting is a good intended person who just wants to get their opinion heard. I don't. I don't think that's true. But I. I think that a lot of those people maybe maybe did deserve to, to get stabbed because they were doing the wrong thing. But I don't think these men were doing the wrong thing. I, I think they were doing the right thing. Oh that's well, Judge for... Arden. Then we we will let you conduct their trial and you decide their fate. How about that? I, I don't. I don't want to be their judge. But that's 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 exactly what you're doing. No. You're I'm letting the back. judge be their judge. No, you're you're not hearing them out. You that's, have, that's not, it's not, not my job, job to hear them out. They it's, broke the law. We take them in. The justice system happens. That's how it works. And you don't have one person deciding how everything works for one particular moment, for one particular group of people. So, so they, you're you're saying that you're you're okay with with them with them possibly being killed for for trying to give people food? Are you okay with someone possibly being killed for breaking into someone's house, taking their things, and murdering a family? Uh, no, but that's not what they did. That's what that's they would have let happen. I, I don't... They took resources from the guard. They abandoned their post. They put citizens at danger for not being there. The, there are laws in place. They, they use their, they, they use their best so, ju judgment. 
their best judgment would have been to fulfill their oaths. If they didn't like the direction the guard was going, they could have protested. If they didn't like that... This, that seems like a, a bad idea in this city. If you protest, you, you seem to get killed. Protest is different from riot. And there, there would, like, notably almost to echo this, at this point as you're coming around through the, uh, the walkway near High Bridge, having made your way most of the way down the, uh, the main thoroughfare on the eastern side of Corvosa, uh, there would still be uh, some protests going on in the main square just inside the High Bridge district. Uh, again, these are... These haven't really stopped... Uh, it's, it will be less than it had been the previous day, uh, less so even than it had been this morning. Uh, but there is still some together. Uh, there are some members of the uh, guard, uh, really literally just a pair of them, uh, down on the, on the corner, just around. But they are perfectly fine. No one is stopping their chants or their assembly or their gathering or anything. Uh, and they are still here just protesting the queen. Uh, the new crown, the new regent, as they have been since the news of the king's death broke. Uh, using, and as, what? Using that as a perfect example, like, this is exactly what should be happening all across the city right here. This is perfectly fine and acceptable. Yeah. It's not violent. Uh, yeah. And the guards could have prevented the ones who were being violent. I, I'm pretty sure the guards, the, those are guards protesting. They could very well be. That's by all means their right, as long as they're not harming people. But, 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 but what if they left their the post to protest? The guards are like on the corner of the square, like just what the guards are there. Yeah. yeah. If a guard joins it when he's off duty, so be it. But when a guard's doing his job, he's got to be a guard. Otherwise, the he, city's going to fall into he turmoil. He has a dedication to the city and its people, not to the individual. Well, well let me ask you this then. Because cause just... Grant me this because I'm, 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 I'm new <laughs> to this. Wall. I'm new to this uh. whole city thing. Okay, I get it. He may need to be punished. He was their leader. He gave them an, an order, and and he did the wrong thing, and he broke the law or whatever. But in in your version of what should be, they they have to follow his order, right? Because he's their superior. At this point, you're uh, you're on your way up the path to the front portcullis, the the front gatehouse of Citadel Bolshevik. Uh, having made almost the, the whole journey. Uh, and you see a man approaching, leaving the Citadel, who was very much definitely not a guard, and also just a very distinctive-looking person who absolutely stands out throughout the crowd. He looks to be fairly old, maybe in his 70s, possibly even 80s, all the skin of his face uh, wearing the wrinkled signs of age, but he's carrying it fairly decently well. Uh, it's coated with a layer of white paint uh, around his brows and his cheekbones and the ridge of his nose uh, that almost loosely forms the outline of a skull upon his face. You can't tell if this is something that is painted over the top or literally tattooed into his skin because it appears to be quite faded. Uh, he's got fairly long, rough black hair going down shoulder length and a necklace that looks like it is made of an assortment of various small bones uh, centered with the skull of some animal with a fairly large snout, maybe five inches long in its center. I like this man. He, any of you who live in Corvosa would recognize a Chawanti. They are not common throughout the city. Um, they're the, the Chawanti peoples from the Cinderlands up to the northeast are not on the greatest of terms traditionally with the city of Corvosa vis-a-vis -vis the Shelly X conquering them and founding Corvosa thing. <laughs> um, but there are still some of them around. And this man uh, is very clearly a Shwanti priest or elder of some kind. Uh, the face paint he wears and the bone necklace is very much unique, though his features give him away as clearly a member of that distant tribe. Uh, but he's coming down the ramp as you go up. He's his business. Good uh, old-fashioned southern uh, wave as you pass. Wave, you nod briefly. Uh, you pass each other in the street. Hmm. Uh, and then at the gatehouse itself, just a couple moments later, the two guards standing on duty uh, would be talking amongst themselves, as they usually are. Not the most dutiful of Corvos and guards that are getting rotated here. And it seems that... The rigid nature, perhaps, of life in the Citadel has gotten a little bit lax in the wake of the city's anarchy. 
mean, clearly, they're clearly talking about the guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe not the guy himself specifically, so much as the Shawanti people. And uh, as you're passing by, you literally hear one of them say, oh, that's ridiculous. They're not here to talk about peace. They're sizing up the city for war. They see the chaos. Maybe he's a new recruit to the guard. He looks like he'd fit right in now. <laughs> so... They both kind of like look over. <laughs> like not, you know, having a conversation, not really realizing other people can clearly hear you, that little like brief social startle, like <laughs> can't listen to that. That's our conversation. <laughs> Uh, but but say nothing else as you walk by and make your way back into Citadel Bolshevik with the Cowhammer Boys and the Sergeant mm -hmm. Deserter. And here we will take our midstream break before we follow up on the guard end of this, checking back in with Field Marshal Croft and... <clears throat> turning in all these weapons to the Quartermaster. Turning in a great number of weapons to the Quartermaster. Hey, uh, and buddy. <laughs> he's going to be happy. Oh, he's going to be so pleased. Arden's got a gift for he you. He loves you guys <laughs> and interacting with all of you specifically. But there's a great many things clearly going on in Corvosa. It's a very busy town. A sergeant who seems adamant that he is doing what he believes to be right hands strange supply coming into the town for the Cowhammer Boys in the first place. What a weird like back alley black market avenues of things sort of taking the limelight in the wake of the near anarchy the city fell into organized that, crime that's the word you're looking and, and for. that was it actually a, a like regular crime almost but. the perfect conversation of what a lawful good person and a chaotic good Pink person lawful good chaotic good head butting yeah it's uh <laughs> the, the main antagonist of lawful good is not chaotic evil it's chaotic good y'all 100 <laughs> percent but just over here neutral good like you're both right, but stop. <laughs> <laughs> neutral good, please shut up. <laughs> yeah, both the neutral good is please shut up. And we have all of these various things laying out before us. Just so many wonderful little hooks. We'll be right back, everyone. Don't go too far. Maybe, I think, probably 10, the 12 heroes, minutes of break time before we return. The heroes of old Corvosa, no. the hook. I mean, the fact that... <laughs> I don't want to be left out of fist pumps. <laughs> Welcome back, <laughs> everybody. I don't know if their fist pump was in camera. It looked like it probably was. Yeah, it could have been. But I don't have 100%. It was confidence. definitely in your camera, right? Well, that's what I mean, like in my camera. It should have been, yeah. Like, I'm, throwing be. up, I'm throwing yeah, up that the there. Inspire Stone. Mm. That's the what I'm here to do. Inspire Stone. The Inspire Stone, man. Um, we have, before we get back into things, one more hero card to give out here. Um, that I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, thank you. I don't want to interrupt the conversation that we had going because we had very interesting uh, inter-party disagreements mm. that were happening. But amidst that, uh, it was just the, kind of the end of the Van Casker skimpy thing, which is the, kind of a big scene. Darren, remembering that you have a non-lethal weapon. <laughs> <laughs> a fist bump, man. Cool. Ghost of Azan gives this down to you. And sorry, it took so long to hand that one out. That was on me. Uh, but <clears throat> which catch one? your breath. Just take a moment, then get back in there. Hmm. If hmm. fatigued not. If fatigued not. <laughs> I think that my favorite one I've seen so far is if missed don't. Yeah. That, that's definitely a potent that's peak. card. That's peak. Uh, but hmm. we left off heading back into Citadel of Bolshevik with the Cowhammer Boys in tow. Uh, all of them even alive except one. Uh, and Sergeant Van Kaskerkin, not happy with the situation. Uh, but at least coming along with the group of us, walking himself, accepting his lot at this point. Uh, oh. Turning this whole group over to the guard would be no real difficulty. And uh, as you do, the watch captain uh, would very shortly after want to bring you, of course, back up to Field Marshal Croft herself uh, for you to report in with everything that you had found. So mere minutes after arriving back in the Citadel, uh, everything is taken off your hands pretty quickly, uh, and you are led back into the castle keep and back to the office of the field marshal. Are you, speaking of your heap of weapons in the armor, do you still have all of those, or are you just heaping them on the cart for them to deal with later? No, all the weapons that I took off them are in the cart. I'm not I carrying that. I would also submit the knife as uh, evidence. The little silver dagger? Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, but the group of you would arrive once more into field marshal Croft's office. There's a card on the door, though. 
Oh, there's a card on the door as you're heading back in for Floblin showing restraint earlier and not incinerating anybody who didn't necessarily need to be incinerated. <laughs> Those squabbling was what Jaded Tempest called out. Distract foe. You called that the swing? Pathetic. Is that just taunt? <laughs> <laughs> Provoke. <laughs> But oh, that's interesting. Okay. As you step in, she is sat behind her desk um, and looks up. Obviously, word would not have reached her yet. You pretty much got led directly here. Uh, but she would recognize, obviously, the group that she's out this morning. Like, ah, that was rather brief. Yeah, job's done. Reporting. The job is done. You. All his guards but one are alive, too. How do you guys look? Perfectly fine. I know you definitely got <laughs> I... whacked. Actually, from from the heel, uh, you probably look a lot better. Covered in pig's blood. Covered in pig's blood. That's fair. I yeah, haven't had time to wash it off. That's fair. I got a big bruise on my gut. Yeah, you guys got back from a butcher shop. You got bonked pretty hard. Yeah, uh, I still got the big get, get, uh, big mark from when I got smashed with a spear haft. I, I mostly hurt myself from falling out a window. And she's looking across the group of you. What, did you just storm the place and <laughs> deal with him at arms? They tried talking to him first, but uh, they, they weren't too one minimal. Of them drew negotiations. A on me, and I had to draw my gun on him. Negotiations broke down real fast. Unfortunate, but with deserters in these times, I, I'm afraid it isn't entirely unexpected. Well, the fact that you've managed to bring nearly all of them alive, including the sergeant himself, is impressive, a admirable even, and I'm grateful for that beyond words. Uh, a gratefulness perhaps an only coin can express. I'll contact the, uh, our quartermaster and have it uh, organized for you. So you think we but, can pin the tin coin I gave to the citizens to call a wire as a business expense? Oh, to take it right off your taxes, John. What? What taxes? Well, have you, did, you, did you find anything useful? Did he have any paperwork? Was he forthcoming at all? Do you have any idea of why he has left the guard? Uh, 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 the uh, only thing we really found, honestly, with the, the people getting all in a fuss, there was a dagger there that I already gave to the, the gentleman who took them from us. It uh, looked out of place. <laughs> and uh, she just kind of nods. That's he... Well, he was very vocal about his opposition to the orders to quell the riots at he, first. He, he was, he just, he, he didn't want to want to hurt people and, and he wanted to, to feed them, which was what he was doing. He was just giving meat away. He didn't really say why, but he, he was. Well, he may have been giving meat away, but we're giving cards away. Arden for being named after my hometown, apparently. Use it unwisely from Abraxas that, that, 117. That, that's almost guaranteed. He's only going to use for like, stupid <gasps> like a hero point against an ally. Stoke the magical flame. Oh, you know I'm going to. In the name of the all-seeing eye, I call forth the eternal. This is your card, man. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blind trade. <laughs> I mean, you want this. Fine trade. You like all a right, spicy? All right, hold like on. A spicy? Here. Yeah. Facilitate exchange. For, 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 right. for, for so flavor they alone. Will throw you a card for that. You were <laughs> kidding. <laughs> so, he kind of nods. That's strange. I'm honestly not Dude. really sure what to say about that. I don't know anything of it, but hopefully, if nothing else, either a few days in the cells or, well, proper interrogation if necessary, you'll get some information for us. P -p please, I, I don't know. I, I guess my word doesn't mean much, but I, I really do think he, he had good intentions. I, I think he deserves to, to be punished for deserting his post, but I, I don't. I don't think he should be killed. He well, also didn't try to hurt us. He, he, he was did using it. the the back end of his spear, a and then he surrendered. I was actually fighting in self defense on his part. Is it self-defense if it was you try to fight the guard away who are trying look, to arrest I'll you? I'll take it under advisement. <laughs> I, I will, and I appreciate your concern, but... We'll have a conversation about this later. Honestly, the the issue is not anything that arose through combat with the group of you or anything he's done with his time. It's the desertion of the guard in the first place. Mm. Uh, the degree of the crown is quite clear. There's generally one ultimate penalty for that. But... I do know the man, of course. He is, well, admittedly relatively fresh to the guard. Well, one of our youngest and newest sergeants, actually. But we'll take it under advisement. Hmm. I must admit, again, that I am thoroughly impressed by your abilities and your, your haste. 
Well, you're only gone for a scant it. couple of hours. Oh, I had expected this to be an operation, uh, perhaps the work of days. Maybe that this is the advantage and hopefully not in the future, the disadvantage of hiring on deputies for the Crown. Uh, you've performed spectacularly. As I said, I'll contact the quartermaster. I in no way expected this to be done so quickly and so thoroughly. You have my thanks and the Queen's. Thank you, sir. You uh, look... Uh, she kind of looks at Darren and John it's, uh, primarily. You, you certainly look like you could use some rest and after such an incredibly expeditious and fruitful excursion. You've more than earned it. Uh, and she kind of looks, looks at Darren specifically with a bit of a smirk. You're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> totally misses it. Thank you. <laughs> so happy. Uh, but b- b- before we leave, c- can I ask one more question? By all means. If I was if I was looking for for somebody who had been k- kidnapped in the in the city, and m- maybe sold, and w- where 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 could I start looking? The, the reason I'm I, the reason I'm I'm here is because my I came to the t- the city with my nephew. We we were l- looking at buildings and and learning about structures, and, and he got kidnapped, and and I, taken. I I would like to help in whatever way we could, but additionally, I would address you to our civic offices towards the castle, where we do have a missing persons program, but it's been all but dissolved in the wake of the king's passing. We I, I couldn't spare the resources. I, I was just hoping that you would have an idea of where the, the location would be of people who might want that that kind of good. Fortunately, whatever vices this city may have, may have uh, human trade is very infrequently among them. Uh, I wouldn't know where to begin. Uh, with the vetting of our docks and our location, uh, attempting to run any kind of a slavery operation out from here would be asinine, if not outright foolish. Uh, ever since our separation from Cheliax, that was, the slave trade was the first thing to cut. We may have an idea about that, actually, Arden. But make no mistake, I wish you the best in this search, and if there is any way that we can be of assistance. I, 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 would, I would do it on, on my own time. It, w- it wouldn't interfere with, with my duties, I, pr- I promise. Well, consider yourself duty-free for now. I'll call upon you again when there's more work to be done, more work that may require or at least benefit from an outside hand. Again, thank you. Consider me impressed. Right, then. First place is the bath. This is a lot of pig blood, and it's very sticky. Good luck with that. I need me some meat and a nap. <clears throat> hey, Arden. Remember that rumor that we heard in that shop when we were selling things? The Spider King and Old Corvosa? Uh, the guards dissolved their missing persons program, and frankly, they probably didn't have it well equipped anyway to begin with, but... Spider King person, this uh, ill zind that they were talking about. Organized crime is something I find distasteful, but I bet you their organization be well connected. Maybe they can help. Look, uh, I don't, I don't know what I, I have to, to give any of you that that you would that you would want aside from me, just just begging. But until until they give us another duty, I, I promise I'll, I'll, I'll pay all of you as, as independent contractors to help me with the gold they pay me, but p- please help you, me find my nephew. You don't have to pay me for this. I'll help you out. And maybe it might not, we might not find him right away, but maybe this person will have enough ears and with enough gold. I mean, we just earned a, si- a sizable purse. If we pool our resources, perhaps we can find something impressive enough to make him pay attention. He's only 12. We'll find him. Okay. So the group of you are left now, uh, barely noon in this day, uh, with nothing left pending that needs done for the Corvus and Guard. The group of you are free to pursue your own ends, your own investigations if you so choose, or to simply rest and relax, as is the case uh, almost certainly for John. Uh, You have the lion's share of a day before you. Um, John, of course, we'll start with you. Because we've already announced your intentions quite clearly. Um, 
I'm gonna first, Zaren, do you want me to clean your weapons, maintain them while you do whatever you want? I'm perfectly capable of cleaning myself, but I appreciate the offer. All right, Zen, I'm just gonna take the rest of the day to react, take a bath, maintain my weapons, maybe head into town and wander after that, but. It has certainly been a trying morning, <clears throat> uh, but that just leads to an even more enjoyable, well-earned rest. Absolutely cathartic. The act of just getting to sit there and do nothing sometimes after getting beaten beaten <laughs> beaten by the cow hammer boys is probably something i'm sure that you are very much going to relish uh floblin what are you going to do with the afternoon well since uh my services are no longer needed at the moment for the rest of the day to my knowledge i'm gonna head down to the mess hall and have a plate of meat and then a plate of uh some charcoal and just you know one for my mouth one for my hair one for my mouth one for my hair yeah, so floblin's gonna get hit with a pan uh, <laughs> <laughs> it takes about five tries before he mines. He'll get there. Um, the I'm gonna go do a little bit of shopping. Okay, uh, and you've got a decent amount of coin from your adventures, plus your own like personal resources, surely. So <sighs> I'm so sad that the all worlds meet thing devolved into chaos immediately. Because man, I was excited. For Reth returning to his house being absolutely trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That. You, you, oh, you yeah, mean, that thing. You mean the hit I called out on myself? That Arden called on himself. <laughs> you were going to end up on the meat rack. And I am He's, sad. He still has no idea that that but happened. But your home survives. Uh, for now, if you for are now. if you aren't even like stopping to grab anything or heading back, you, you have stop by, relax a bit. Yeah, your own home is almost certainly going to be more comfortable than the Corvos and Guards barracks, regardless of how minimal they try to make your situation. Uh, and again, you have free passage to and from Citadel Voshevik. There is nobody making you stay on site there, um, especially throughout the day. Mm -hmm. you can definitely, just go home and relax on your own couch. Uh, anything in particular that you are searching for? Shut up. Never mind. Uh, Darren, <laughs> what are you doing? That face? We're done. Darren? <laughs> what do you want? Suppressors. For your archivist. Yeah. They're one silver. And I want 20 of them. Oh. <laughs> because they are one use. <laughs> you want a silencer for your cannon yeah that's why they're one use yeah I mean is this like like putting like a two liter bottle on the end um <laughs> pretty I'll much you the item description just like an entire like clay contraption no, no, that just explodes it's literally, it's literally, it's literally just a, no it's just a huge pillow uh, these small firearm components are capable of muffling most of the weapon's explosive sound when fired. Without a silencer, a firearm shot makes a loud and distinctive bang, which can easily be heard through doors and thin walls. That's how it works, but it's a firearms component. Oh. With silencers only make a quiet noise when fired. Due to engineering constraints, a silencer can't be attached to any firearm with a scatter trait. Attaching a silencer to a firearm takes one minute, and the silencer is consumed the first time a shot is fired through it, hit or miss. I dislike you Basically, less and less. I'm shooting a big gun in a, in a big city, and it's going to attract a lot of attention unless I can make them a little less uh, conspicuous. You take a handful of components and you rub it on your gun for a minute, and then it works. Component. It's silence now. Yeah. Sorry, component. Continue for one minute. Yes. It's, it's, it's silent just, now. It's just a big pillow. It's just on um, one of the things you attach to armor and weapons that talismans? we never use. Yeah, talismans. It's just a talisman for the gun. It would make more sense. Mm. Mm. My, my, my mind would process it better <laughs> were it literally just a weapon talisman. <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be you like... easier to process if they just went magic. Yeah, yeah obviously. <laughs> I love it. it like, it's Pathfinder. It's magic. I ain't got to explain crap. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, uh, Ermagus just got it right. It uses, it uses the, the game's, game's mechanics. mechanics. To <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Okay. Oof. It says so in it the book. It says so in the book. <laughs> 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 Can't argue with that. Uh, okay, so you want to go in and drop two gold on silencers for your giant cannon. Yeah. Sure. 
Darren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also more ammo. You have the entire city of Corvosa at your disposal. Um, guns and firearms are still somewhat a new and emerging technology, but not one that would be beyond the means of a city such as this. I imagine they would mostly be pressed into service by people much like yourself, hunters, um, or travelers, or even, you know, very curious and willing to experiment mercenaries. Gnomes. Who want to try out the gnomes. <laughs> Who want to try out the new bang thing. Um, go, uh, bow hard, crossbow stupid, bang stick good. Mm. Uh, so there would be supply of bullets and fire uh, and and some simple firearms. Not much. I don't know if you can get twenty freaking silencers. But I guess this is a box full of in the discount room. <laughs> like, you're lucky there's a clearance sale today. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Darren wants to help Arden find his kid. And Darren, it makes sense that the only organized, intelligent force left in the city is probably criminal. <laughs> Old Corvosa would be well, a place to find it. And the Spider King seems like a guy who would be in charge of that sort of stuff. But he is literally like that is literally the extent of his experience with organized crime. He's a 16 year old kid, straight laced. Middle class family. Corvosan badge. Corvosan badge. Attends on the rest Rotsi, of his sable company uniform. Right? Mm -hmm. Who is trying to get his friend hooked up with organized crime. I have literally <laughs> my good heart and nothing else helping me in this regard. Just go to the black market. Uh, you oh. know, every, every shop has a black market back in the corner, oh. which is where they do all the illegal things. Oh, that's, that'd be great. That'd be <laughs> great. Um, the darker tents. And they're like off the road, so the guards can't see them. That's true. That's true. I have to put my badge in my pocket, otherwise I can't go in there because it says no guards allowed on a sign outside. <laughs> okay, it makes sense. And you're legally not allowed to, like a guard can't go in without saying they're a guard. It's like it's right. against the guard's code. So, I mean, they get to continue existing. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. That makes sense. We have to follow signs. We're lawful. All right. <laughs> so I, I do have some good news, by the way. Silencers are one bulk each, so I cannot carry 20. <laughs> They're one They're bulk? They're one? It is a giant ceramic canister. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Okay. So I can't carry it said 20. It small in the description. But I can have... Relatively small. <laughs> but I can it's have Relative to what? The cannon. Like, to a bigger silencer. And I'll just <laughs> carry four with me. Well, bulk doesn't necessarily translate to weight. It's just how awkward it is to carry. It is a giant. I'm like, I'm. All I'm saying is, it is a giant ceramic barrel. You're yeah. just gonna look like a camel with that these like humps on your four back. Four inches across and eight inches long, with a bore through the middle, with interior chambers that are meant to mute and dampen the, the sound. It gets blown out in a single shot. It is a big old ceramic bucket. I'm not walking around with you. I would like you. to point out that from real life. Uh, washers dampen the sound of gunfire extremely efficiently, but they're one use. I don't know what a washer is. A, a rubber washer. Like a, a rubber... Like the thing you put at the bottom of the sink like to keep it... From... Like an O-ring? Yes. Like an, like an O-ring, but it's solid. There's two of them, and inside is chamber this... for the gas to expand. We are going to talk about the silencer for the rest of stream. <laughs> If we don't Good just job. stop talking about the silencer. So Where's we're going ass? to stop talking about the silencer Pocket now. edition. <laughs> Pocket edition silencer. It's just this big. All right. So Sorry, I have man. no idea where to start with this. Are you going alone or are you bringing Arden with I'd you? I'd probably make saying? sense to bring Arden with me. Although I know for a fact he knows nothing more than I do. But, but, but Arden actually has a plan. Ah, but you can fortune tell and you think it works. Maybe you should do your fortune telling thing and it'll point us in the direction of someone that we're supposed to talk to. It, it works like that, right? Does it? I have no idea. You oh. know. Okay. I, well, I, I did have an alternative plan also. Uh, okay. We're going to go get our gold from the from the quartermaster. I guess we should talk to him. I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go to the quartermaster and, and get my gold for, for completing the, the mission. Um, that... Seems like it is a thing that has not gotten through yet. That is, uh, she was very much not prepared with petty cash for you to come back literally two hours later. Um, <laughs> Boom. It is going to take them a moment to organize well, it, you. It, it, it's okay. I, I have some money of my own because ugh, my charity got given back to me. Um, so I'm going to um, go to the, uh, the the kitchen, the the wherever they keep the food. The and mess I, hall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and I'm g going to ask, how much would it be to to buy extra food? Do you want to get hit with a pan? N no. <laughs> I, I'm willing to just to, to just pay for it. I mean, I mean, you pay a certain amount. I am willing to pay that plus a little bit extra. To... Hey, how the kitchens work? Get. But, 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 we got dinners to prepare for for the what dozen and a half men that are still left but, here. But that's my point. You We're have... not single serve. Get. But but you have a lot of food, and and I would like some of it, because because you're not preparing it for that many people, and and I could use some of it. Shut the door of the kitchen. <sighs> Flubbling kind of overhears and kind of leans plan? over. And he goes, looks, looks at Arden and straight up says, "You know, he's a little stingy. You have to wait your turn, like everybody else." Well, when you think about it, if if we're gonna go looking for this guy, people are probably gonna want, you know, pay payment for giving us the, the tip or something, or you know. Yeah, cash usually works. But but people don't want cash; they want food. Cash keeps better. Oh. Okay, I, I guess we could go do that. Yeah, money is really useful for that for that reason. Actually, I, I have money. I don't know what any of it does, but I have it. Oh, that's good. That's good. I, I, I actually don't even know what what stuff costs because I'm not used to spending it like that. But maybe you can help me. Honestly, things that don't cost anything that makes sense right now because of the riots. But uh, yes, I'll help you with anything oh, that you need. Okay, well, let's go. So the group of you are going to uh, the pair of you, I suppose, are going to make a journey. Up to old Corvosa to attempt to find this eel's end. Yeah, you've heard about. I heard an old lady say his name in a shop once. <laughs> seems like a kind of seems like a nice I guy. Would like to talk to old criminal man now, please. <laughs> Hi, can I talk to the criminal boss guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I had a plan for that too, actually. It's about an abducted child. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, no, I'm, a, I'm just a deputy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I might leave my badge in my pocket. I'm, I'm putting I'm that away. I'm on a company outfit. I still have that badge in you, you are taking that off. Or, or I'm not going with you. you I mean, that uniform, probably not, but the gear. Like, the gear is your I'm armor. I'm not walking is, around without armor your armor on. Armor is clearly a sable company. So yeah. if you want to go with your armor on, you're going to be a sable company marine. Just tell them you stole it. <laughs> you're... You don't, you don't you know, know what? I'm not, here. I'm not here. You know what? Actually, <laughs> I mean, I really want to not wear it, but okay. Okay, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I hope I, I don't get jumped. I'll protect you. Oh, kind of you. Thank you. One of you aid the other. Make me a society check. I guess you don't have to aid if you fear failure. Uh, I, my, I, my, I, my, my, not only is my fear of failure, it is likely I will <laughs> fail. I would think it would be best if we both just try to make society check separately and hope for the best. Well, the, the problem is that would require you this, like, I guess you could split up in town and, like, get together later. Because if you're both following your own investigations, you're not going to be together. Because, like, together you're doing the same track, same leads. I got you. What do you think? I I, I think we should, uh, we, we should stay together. And I uh, think we should go about finding him, you know, the, the, with, with what we're good at. Um... I, I don't know much about the city, but I think if we uh, go to the um the, the part of town that you say that we're talking about, m maybe we can track him down just by talking to people who are not, you know, people who are, you know, up there. Lost me about halfway through that, but I, I think I, I think I got what you're going for. Uh, okay. All right. So we're going to stay together. All right. Who's Aiden who? I don't think any. We, I still don't think we should aid each other. You don't want to aid? Just one uh, roll? Yeah, one roll each. One. Well, we can't do we one can't, roll each. One roll. Together. You're doing the same I'll, thing. I'll, so. I'll, I'll roll. You'll roll, okay? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do That's worse. That's an elf than... god. You'll roll. Thank you. It's one of the six, and also does ring. Uh huh. Thanks. I think she was actually the god of the jewel gate. No, we don't know that. Are we talking about silencers again? <laughs> <laughs> Mahathala. Me... Shut up! Stop! No. <laughs> Give me a society. <laughs> Yolo. Seventeen. Well, it's seventeen. Uh, heading up into or Old Corvosa, it would be surprisingly not really difficult to track down. Uh, there is a kind of unofficial district called the Narrows, which is a canal that passes through from the seas uh, to the Jigare River interior. It is too narrow and too small for your large, like, seaworthy ships to pass through. You can't bring your giant cargo merchant passages uh, but smaller boaties and dinghies can absolutely float among and under the myriad docks and bridges jutting throughout this area. Old Corvosa is run down and unpleasant, but 
you almost have the rite of passage that is the Narrows to get there. It's somewhere you do not want to spend very much time. Uh, find a bridge, walk across, and go very quickly. But Eel's End would bring you right back there. Uh, as you would discover that it is not a building or a proper establishment, but almost a rat's nest of smaller vessels moored up on the eastern end of the Narrows. Huh. Uh, the Eel's End itself, you would learn, is in fact the name of a ship. Huh. Which is permanently affixed at this point and is largely its own floating business. What is what is it with you people in the, in this town and just turning ships into places that you just you know are? I mean, I guess are they supposed to be on the water? Well, they are on the water, but they're just but, but they, they don't kinda, move. No, I think it's turned into cheap real estate. Is kind of what it is. But I I mean I don't. You have to pay property taxes for land. A good point. You don't have to pay property taxes for a boat, unless uh. the queen goes and passes one. <laughs> if you own the dock, you could do basically whatever you want. There you go. I guess we'll we'll go in there. Yeah, let's let's see how this works. So heading down to Eels End itself. Now that you know what it is that you're looking for, it is very surprisingly easy to locate. When I say like a rat's nest, it is an absolute nest. As on the eastern end of the Narrows, there is a pier about seventy feet long uh, that extends out a bit askew from this canal and uh, a little bit out into the Jigare River itself. Mm -hmm. uh, leading to one larger, uh, about not the biggest ship you've ever seen, but like a, a full-size merchant ship, one bigger than the one that would be out uh, behind the fishery. And sort of almost sporadically spread around it are a quartet of other smaller ships. Uh, that are all moored and seemingly attached together. Uh, even from the beginning of the pier, you can see a series of walkways and bridges and gangplanks stretching from each vessel to its neighbors, making the whole thing itself almost into one strange little plaza. Uh, it is, by the time you find this, mid-afternoon. Uh, and you can see that there is very little going on at the Eels End Pier at the moment. Uh, but there are quite a few sailors sort of scattered around. Uh, seemingly decently well-armed and armored sailors. I don't know about with scale mail or studded leathers. Uh, scimitars, clubs on their hips. Uh, many of them hanging out on the deck of the largest ship. Uh, many of them around conversing somewhat aimless on the pier itself. A pair of them uh, just sort of lounging at the front of the pier. Uh, one, a huge keg in hand, literally taking drinks. Uh, the other woman laughing and explaining something to him as you see this from the road nearby. D Darren, do we do we want to go in there by, by ourselves? Or n now that we know where it is, do, do we want to come back with, you know, the muscle? Well, I mean, I, I think if we bring the muscle, they're more likely to want to flex the muscle and get into a fight. Whereas if we just walk in and try to do business, I think it'll be okay. Okay. I believe you. <laughs> Scales. All right. Let's do this. So as you walk onto the pier, the two at the uh, the front don't even acknowledge you. The man's mm -hmm. still drinking, the woman telling whatever hilarious story she has. Uh, they eye you a bit. Oh, the guy eyes you a little bit as you walk past, but I mean... Friendly wave. Eyes are a little weirder. Uh, <laughs> turns his attention back to the lady as the pair of you approach the walkway up to this tangle of ships. Mm -hmm. uh, directly in front of you would be this massive ship. It's deck a dozen feet above the deck, so if it's adjacent neighbors with the uh, gangplanks, uh, basically just ladders that have been laid to either side that look some level of difficult to climb. Uh, but the ships on either side of you here as you approach the nearest are as absolutely different night and day as they could possibly be. The smallest ship is on the right. Uh, one that looks like it's undergone countless crude and haphazard repairs. Uh, whether or not it could be cut loose and would continue floating is absolutely anyone's guess. Hmm. Uh, but lashed up to the pier and its neighbors it is, as it is, it seems stable enough. It has the most prominent large nameplates among the bow, facing this walkway here, 
uh, with per perhaps one of the gentlest, simplest ramps leading up to it. Um, this plate in a bright brass emblazoned golden hawk. The other side is a very strange beast. It's a ship of a single deck, uh, looking like whatever it may have had in the aft had been disassembled. Uh, turning the top of this into one large, flat area. Hmm. Masts entirely removed. It's just the floating hull it's of a the ship. barge. I guess it would be a barge at this point. Mm -hmm. it, like, but it wasn't. It clearly wasn't made to be that. Okay. Like, it looks like it was a sailing ship that they just ripped the masts off of huh. uh, to clear out this big, flat space. Uh, we're, we're because it has it. no ports for oars or anything. Uh, it has no visible means of locomotion at this point. Uh, but assembled atop its deck are two squat buildings. Hmm. Like they have built structures, a, a pair of them, square onto the deck itself. And you can hear some fairly light but upbeat fiddle music drifting out from that ship to the side. Um, as you get closer, you can see there is some activity inside that one, whereas the Golden Hawk looks to be near deserted. Uh, walking slightly further, you would see the final pair of ships on either side of the massive eels end itself. Uh, the one on your right, similar, but it's almost, I guess, barge-like appearance uh, opposite from this first one, but it's sporting one long canopied building. Uh, the ship itself is drawn about with draperies and ribbons, bright colors and small incense burners, fonts and sconces set throughout the walkway, uh, looking almost akin to the fortune teller's house in town. It is brightly colored and very much the most visible of the four here. Uh, the walkway up to the ship, which has the lowest deck near level with the pier, actually lined with a damp and crushed velvet from however long it's been in service, leading up to the simple double doors inside this one long hall now atop the deck. And the other side is a ship that looks near as garish, but for very different reasons. It's fully painted a dark red. Uh, this is the only other one that you immediately see a nameplate in like a black thick script, the dragon's breath across the prow. And it's matched with an ornamental carving out of the uh, bowsprit of a dragon's head, mouth open, flames jutting from its maw, curling up and down into the winds. Uh, this one still retains the fact that it is a boat and has decks and masts and whatnot, unlike the Golden Hawk and the House of Clouds, uh, but bears no hint as to its purpose. The Eel's End itself looks to be the most traditional of the boats here. Again, significantly larger than the smaller ones gathered around it. It has three tiers of decks, uh, and save for the activity that's happening in this twin, uh, twin building barge to your left, many of the sailors are gathered among its decks. Uh, some tables and chairs are clearly laid out with seating and uh, arrangements for many more people, but activity seems to be relatively low, as they're mostly, mostly clustered around the middle deck before what would be the captain's quarters in a traditional layout. I, I guess we go up there? It makes sense. Uh, though usually you want to uh, announce your presence. Um, well, is but, there anyone? There, there's no one guarding the gangplanks or sitting no, there keeping eye on things. All of the gangplanks up to all of these ships are freely accessible. I guess that's this is. These are more like walkways at this point. Maybe we should just go introduce ourselves. Uh, see how they do things. Um, here's the Ilzin. Let's let's head on up. And I mean, I'll I, just balance up the the ladders to get up there. I, I always thought that the underworld was supposed to be like you know like under. And you know, hidden, but this seems really obvious. I really don't have any exp any, any experience with this, to be honest with you. Um, if things do go wrong, we should probably run, but I don't think they will. I mean, we're, we're really nice people, and we're just looking to help. We're looking for business. I, I mean, they'll, they'll want money, I'm sure. Okay, we'll, we'll balance. So you, uh, this will be the only one of the ships that has a traditional, uh, somewhat steep gangplank that mm -hmm. is a little awkward and somewhat, somewhat concerning to walk up. All the other four ships have had theirs repurposed uh, into uh, to the point where the two-building ship quite literally has a staircase affixed to the pier to make it easier to ascend to the bow of the ship itself. Uh, but you would arrive on the lower deck with no real concern. So yeah, this is where many of the tables and chairs are. And uh, there is nobody on this tier 
All the sailors are up on the mid, uh, the middle deck where the main mast is, uh, gathered around one table, playing some kind of uh, dice game. But no one's keeping an eye on anything. There's... Not at all. Wow. All right. I-, I don't think anybody in this in this neighborhood would steal from this this group of people. That makes sense. I mean, there's really nothing here to steal unless you want like patio chairs. So there's there's nothing else really out on this deck. Uh, well, let's hmm, maybe over there. Uh, I... I guess I'll I'll try to I'll, I'll approach a group of sailors and just kind of wait patiently. As you come up to the middle deck and they're still playing, and you're just sort of standing around there awkwardly. Uh, hi. A child has just walked up to a, a crime 16 year lord. A sixteen-year-old boy. Yep. A crime lord's front door. Walks up. <laughs> walks up. I'll wait. Yeah. No, no, no. Finish your game. Um, no. Okay. You're fine. Woman well, kind of turns around, <laughs> raises an eyebrow. She's uh, she's. Fairly well tanned. It looks like she probably spends most, if not all, of her days here in this area out into the sun. Uh, handkerchief holding what hair she has back out of her face. Um, she's sporting the same like thick leather armor that almost all the rest of these sailors are, with a morning star at her hip. She just kind of looks over. M- ma'am? Hi. Excuse me. Um, you lost, lad? No, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. I- oh, we were hoping to speak to your... Uh... Your, your boss. Well, maybe. Maybe we're in the wrong place. We're looking... As he just kind of turns to the rest of the table and yeah. just sort of chuckle. Like, the guys just stopped playing dice at this point. And I was sort of looking your direction. We, as he turns back around. We, Darren's, like, flushing a bit. He's just a little embarrassed. Um, we heard that the Ilzind and the Spider King maintain good order and can help people. And huh. we are coming here to see if maybe they could help. He could help us in exchange for, well... We do what we can. I see. Well, <laughs> can help you in a great sort of ways, I imagine. And she just sort of gestures out down to the pier. Uh, for you, lad, I think, uh, just points a finger down to the uh, one building drawn about the drapery and the ribbon mm-hmm. along uh, the longhouse. The House of Clouds there is probably what you're after. His nephew, he's been missing, lost in the city. My- with the riots. Oh, I promise you, they'll have you forgetting about that in a matter of minutes. No, no you, you don't understand. My my, my nephew Are you was, looking for men? Was, they got men, too. They ain't there to judge. Was k- kidnapped by, by Gadrin Lamb. And we killed him because, well, he kidnapped my nephew and also did a bunch of other really bad things. And then we brought his head back and we did... Well, we... Never mind. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Because we are... Look, look. I, I know it doesn't seem like it, but we are dangerous men. Okay. Oh, we got dangerous men on deck. Be ready. I... <laughs> we can we children. can pay. We Little have some children. money. Oh. But we just don't know where to look. All right. Fair enough. What do you got? <laughs> what, 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 do you, what, what are you offering? I'm looking for information. Um, I, I have some gold. Um, oh. I'll hold up a couple of gold coins. Mm. Just put a hand out. I, I don't. I don't think so. What's your name? <laughs> I'm Darren. Darren, boy, oh, I almost feel bad for this. Look, look, just, just I don't know what you're looking for. I don't know, I don't know who told you what you can find here. Just, just get, get going. Take that coin down to the House of Clouds of the Dragon's Den if you want to forget about whatever it is you're looking for. Uh, no. Whatever your vice is. Lady. We're not here for vices. I don't have a vice. I have a missing nephew, and he's not going to be killed in this godforsaken city with no sense of loyalty who just... All right. Here. Lads, I need you seen this chap's nephew. I'm just kind of laughing and shrugging and shaking heads. I don't think we're uh, going to get any help here. Unfortunate. I don't think we have much for you. We can try to find some other ways. No. Let me speak to the Spider King. He's going to want to talk to us. Oh, my God. Oh. M- maybe he's looking... He don't want to, I promise you he doesn't. M- m- maybe he's looking for, for information on Queen Eliosa herself. Why, why would we care? Why would he care? Why would anyone care? B- because we... We're going to be fine. We pay our taxes. What's going to happen here? But 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 maybe he would care about some other v- very interesting information that w- we might have. Oh, is that true? What kind of information you got? I'm I'm not gonna tell you. You're clearly just gonna, gonna laugh anything. at me. Look, 
I'm, yeah, this is this is amusing to me. Honestly, it is. But I uh, I'm getting a little bored of it. I feel like it's starting to go in circles. Like, uh, if you want to ask around, the is, is she a human or is she a? Yeah, she's she's, she's, she's a human. No, they they would basically be humans. They'd be a dwarf man and a half orc, but they'd be mostly humans. Probably like six humans, a half orc and a dwarf. Eight of them gathered around a pair of tables here. Um, I'll actually say, uh, in dwarvish to the guys sitting there. Um, I know I do not, and in dwarvish, I know I don't look like it, but I am a brother. And I worship Torag like Unless you. Unless just racist. Why? <laughs> <All right. laughs> I don't know what the hell you're saying. Uh, speak Tolan. Oh boy. They, they don't even speak the mother tongue. I don't know the, what you're the talking about. The lady absolutely loses her mind. <laughs> <laughs> and they break up. It's not funny. It's racist is what it is. You know how often I get this? What? Just because I'm a dwarf? I grew up here. I'm from Corvosa. Get, get out of here. We're playing a game. <laughs> the lady is like... Uh, at, at, at this point, I, I'm... I'm... <laughs> okay, dude? Uh, Arden, oh. they're not going to help us. I think we need to try to find something else to do. Oh, the gods. Where, where is his office? Oh. Is, it, is it that door right there? They're not... They're not on the sleeping king of spiders. Like he's got he's got business to tend to. He's got things going on, and you're not you're not whatever that is. Look, you're free to go ask around the golden hawk. You can ask around the twin tigers. You can take your coin to the, we, the we house have, of clouds. You can deal with things. We, Look, go get out get out there. We, the, we, the we have access to the guards. They they want us out. We should leave before. I'll, I'll show the badge. Look, look, really. Are you serious? We do. I'm a Man. police officer. <laughs> <laughs> In training. A couple of faces kind of drop at this. A couple of people with their hands on their weapons. Oh, I, no. I'm not here to do anything to you. I'm just letting you know no, that... No, you're here to leave, clearly. I, I don't know what you're I'm after. I'm going to try to guide, guard, guide you back I, to the ship to get fine, you off. Fine, I guess we're leaving. That was an idiot move. I don't believe you just did that. And, Why? Uh, as you go to leave, uh, you hear a voice from behind you. Hey! Markins! And she uh, calls down to the pier, and one of the other sailors looks up, just points to these two. And they kind of move to the base of the gangplank uh, as the two of you are heading across the lower deck. A pair of guards down on the pier itself. We're leaving. Excuse us. You can't get down there. They're about sort of in your way. I'm gonna step aside and just look to the mouth of the pier. Come on. Do you, do you think that there's any place else in town that would help us? It was just a rumor I heard. I thought we could check it out. Flashing the policeman's badge and the, it, on the den of, an, uh, of what we think is a criminal was a very bad idea. But they seemed to like the, the guards. They said that they paid them off. Oh, they pay their taxes. <laughs> Never mind. Jeez. I don't. I don't know what we can do for now. Maybe. Maybe a lead will come up later. <laughs> well, at least. Now, at least now we know where it is. In case you I, need to burn it down. Darren. <laughs> D- Darren is just like. He has like. Any idea of what to do next is completely gone in his head. He has no idea what to do. He's just blank stared. Like he's just gonna walk out because. I'm not leaving you, but like I'm just like, I'm I don't know hoping. what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Quick, quick side note, I gotta I gotta double check. Druids are wisdom casters, right? Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wisdom's like suggest this. <laughs> this is wisdom. Wisdom of the forest, not wisdom uh, well, of the like it's, it's... I can tell you what that How dog's you name dumb? is if you want. <laughs> I, I, I've never been in, in a city before. <laughs> I think Arden could use an ace up his sleeve. <laughs> only if it says, cover the child in here on point cards. Please protect him. That's not even the child. This is the child. Yeah. Uh, re- reverse strike. You missed. Did I? Did you? Is that if missed? You know? I'm going to look at the top card, its name, and see if it's a repeat because I've just been putting it on the bottom so we go through the rest of the deck. Re- reverse strike. Yeah, but like... uh. Have we gone through a whole deck? That's what I'm cards? checking. Healing mm. prayer. Is that the one that you had? Okay, so we're yeah. at the top, so I'm going to shuffle them. Okay. Do, do, you want, do you want this back? No, you can, you can have it. I mean, they're, they're going to be repeats. I mean, there's going to be ones that have been sloughed, so we probably only know what about half of this deck does. 
Yeah. But I am going to I shuffle it now. I've been not shuffling yeah. it so we could go through the whole deck before I started doing it. That's why I just wanted to double check if we were at back at the at the cycle. I don't know if there's just repeats in the deck too, but Well that's why I checked the second card. Okay. Which was the healing. The efficiency the on you yeah. is much higher than me. <laughs> so the group uh, the pair of you having not really found any success at Eel's end. I feel like we, we had a success. If, if the if, if you mean by success, uh, if my fa success failure. Making one of the funniest freaking scenes. Like Arden, Arden is just a content engine, and I love it. <laughs> this is like. Is this a bad time to mention that I just realized that I'm technically trained in lore underworld? Really? <laughs> 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 would have been more of a help than Arden. Look, look, look I, I, I am. I, the dumpster goblin with you. <laughs> I am. The dumpster I'm living in the streets. I know the streets. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, if it's. I, I am. I am a wisdom ca caster, but th this, this, this is You're very. You're what now? If they yes. would take you. <laughs> if they took me. How? There's no way they would. I mean, I guess they could have. Honestly, took I was in the mess hall when he went down the there. So. Streets. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's. <laughs> He's a god. He's a street goblin. He's a literal like flaming rat. So I am. I hadn't thought to ask him to go and negotiate with crime lords. I, I should have thought better. I'm the sorry. Group of you. <laughs> I, I will never underestimate fire goblins oh, nor dwarves the real again. Muscle. The muscle. <laughs> Absolute peak energy. I, I, I asked if we wanted Beautiful. to bring the muscle. He said no. Should have brought the muscle. So all five of you that evening would end up back at Citadel Bolshevik. Your days, Please adventures. Tell me you tell us that story. Behind you. Or would you Absolutely dare? not. <laughs> <laughs> I will take it to my grave. <laughs> I, I, oh, Arden I'll, I'll will probably tell, tell you Arden later. Arden will tell us. Arden will tell us. If you ask him straight so how, out. How did you spend your day? I I tried to meet a, 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 a crime lord and didn't get very far. Which one? You didn't flash your badge, did you? Please. <laughs> Maybe. Flopping's flames literally just go up higher. And like, well, that is the last thing you do. But, but they said that they, they, they said it. that they were on this good. Joke. They said that they were on good, good terms with the guards. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Goblin just literally does this and starts cursing and Goblin. Oh, we gotta get you, to the to get him to talk about. You this. know, if we were out in the woods, I'll have you know that you all would be dying and I would be keeping all of you alive. We I are in this, this 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 hell world of a of a city, and I don't know what anything. Did, you, did, maybe I'll take you next time. I mean, I do live in the streets, and I do know about uh, the Soho and the, you know, chatter amongst, you know, people in the alleyways. You Wait, know, you, you know about about criminals? And have you ever heard of the Spider King you know, maybe, from the Eels Inn? Literally maybe. just being trained in the Lower Underworld, you would absolutely have heard oh, yeah, of the Spider King. I know he about is it. Like, he is like, Gadron Lamb is a low-level nothing. The Spider King is a yeah. major known figure. Like, Eels End is, yeah. is very much common knowledge among... Flo uh, Flobbin kind of goes... Oh, yeah, the Spider King it basically is, well, as popular as the King came here, in, but in my world. I, we should have just taken Floblin. M maybe I shouldn't have brought the well, good and puppies with me. Maybe you shouldn't have me. assumed it's... that I was just a mere dumpster fire. The good and not. puppy? I, wait a minute, I'm, it was my idea! <laughs> but, but you have to admit, you are, you are very, very, you know, on the straight and narrow. You talk to buildings. You they do talk, talk to buildings. They talk back. And rocks. They talk back. What's the name of Mrs. Rock again? I'm not going to tell you anymore Flobbly, because he's angry know, with you. Do you know of anyone in the underworld who could help us find a missing person for money? Hmm. He's going to find out. Give me a roll. Well, I see a double digits. Start. It's a uh, 16 altogether. Um, well, the Spider King would certainly be one of the most prominent names. A couple of other figures possibly come to mind, maybe? Um, there is... I'm trying to flip madly to find title. Uh, there is another man who is a, known simply by his last name, Orisini, who is an information broker mm. who works out of uh, Garrison Hill right nearby Fort Corvosa. And uh, Orisini... His entire business is knowing things. Uh, and you would know that it's very rare for him to trade directly in coin. He's he's pretty well set as far as finances are. He deals in information and favors. 
I was about to say, so he's the type of guy, if I scratch your back, you scratch mine. More or less. Yeah. Okay. So, in that case, Flobwin ponders for a second. He's like, well, I know a guy that knows things, but he doesn't take gold. He kind of does the, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, but we could take a visit to him if you want. He wants me to scratch his back? Oh. He, he, oh, he just wants us to, you know, a betray our favor. oaths when it's convenient for him. Oh, I see that going great. I mean, if you want me to, I could take you there whenever you want to go. Um, maybe... Look, I've just realized something. When I... When, when I first got out in, into the woods, or when I was first in the caverns with the dwarves, I didn't just go off and pretended like I knew the terrain. I learned about the terrain first, and then I started making decisions. It seems like you all need to teach me about what a city is and how it works before we start making any other decisions. Uh, may I make a suggestion? That's lesson one. Probably leave the talking to me and Darren here. Okay. Darren doesn't do a very good job of talking to <laughs> Oh, like you do. Hey, I stopped the riot from happening. I would like you to You got point punched out. in the face and basically was mugged. I I like that's how that went. I <laughs> let them hit me in the face to now, try to stop it. And then you gave them money. And that sounds I... like a mugging. <laughs> out of all of our successful negotiations so far, I have by far had the most results. I, mean, I don't recall your negotiations going yeah, well either. I saved that nobleman. You did, actually. I'll give you credit for that. That's, that's a good job. But, he also stopped the riot. He did. Yo, okay. But maybe you all will teach me oh, about there. what it oh. means to live in this city and, and what I should do or not do. Oh, that's the problem. Well, cities, cities don't really work. At all. That, at, all. At, at all. Really, they, they like to pretend that they're better, but they're really not. That's the whole reason for the guards, honestly. Because I mean, if it wasn't for the guards, the city would just kind of... They take, I fall. I actually like living here. I mean, it's not. It could be nice if you like it. It could be nice. But you I know, guess I can't. But but I can't really trust anybody. I guess. I mean, I I hide from humans in general. Well, know. there's levels of trust. Okay. Your average person you walk across on the street, you just pretend they don't exist. <laughs> Is that how that oh, works? Okay. Yeah, 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 anybody who interacts with you directly goes down a step. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's actually that's that's yeah, that's actually yeah, he's not wrong he's, he's, uh, yeah. from my experiences in the city so far, which was Gedrick Lam. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much. No, it. He's yeah. actually going to take out a pen and start writing this stuff down. That you interact with goes up half a step, and you go down two steps in their book, and that's just how it is. No one trusts anyone, but you don't openly show it. You're nice. I trust you. That's because I have a gun. Yes, I, I trust someone with the, the cannon strapped to his back. I, I do feel safer when I'm around you. I don't when trust, you have your gun. If you don't have your gun, I don't feel safer. I for don't some trust I look like a shady individual. Well, yeah. It's harder I've to spot nothing me. But help the gun makes it, yeah. it sticks out like a flag. I, I actually think you, you have a really good heart. Well, thank you. That's good. I think you got some really pretty rocks. Oh, that's really sweet of you. This party they like you too. That's my favorite group dynamic. I think of any party that we've run. Is it the magic <laughs> rock? Second edition stuff. It's the everything. It's everything <laughs> about all of you. You guys, this is the most. This is somehow the most dysfunctional Pathfinder party <laughs> I think that I've ever run, and it's an absolute masterpiece. But when's the last time a stranger walked up hey. to you and talked to you in the street and you didn't start trusting them less immediately? It's like I go outside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on. Hey, exactly. That's the, the reason why. The marshal said she was impressed by us. Thank you. I Thank think you. she was patronizing yeah. us. Mom said she's impressed. Mom <laughs> says she likes us. <laughs> Stop drinking, Dad. Mom likes us. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> Well, I feel dirty uh, now. You Thanks. <laughs> what uh, I imagine have uh, a task ahead of you, spending the right. evening mm -hmm. trying to make any amount of headway towards getting Arden to understand how to be a person in the city. I'm turning in for the night. But I'm not even trying. Eventually, all of you would follow what? in suit. Um, resting, finally. Uh, any of you would have had plenty of time throughout the evening. Uh, or even the night if you needed to stop by the Dr. Ward to have any of the medics look after you. Uh, so 
with an yeah. evening, yeah. an evening's rest in Citadel Volchenek, all of you are back to full health. Uh, that's just going to be a regular thing. You again, you have access to doctors if you sleep here. You're at full health, ding, ding, uh, pending ding, ding. something crazy <laughs> happening to you guys. You know, making the quartermaster angry. Pending something crazy happening to you guys or quartermaster related incidents. Mm -hmm. um, the yes. next morning, the group of you would rise to another wonderful day in the beautiful city of Corvosa. Keep hoping it's just all a dream. Just one long running night's van. Here I am. To a contact from one of the guards, uh, a younger woman, stopping by, uh, knocking on whichever door she'd come to first. Probably one of the three of you. Uh, the court master wanted to see you. There was something he was releasing back into your custody. Something you turned over as evidence from a bit of a job you're doing for the field marshal. All right. Uh, He's not angry with dagger? us? I don't know. I don't know his business. I just know there's something he was wanting to turn back out. Something he weren't, he weren't keeping. Well, well let's, go, let, let's go see him. And she just kind of nod and go about her way. Uh, Off to the quartermaster. So after your mornings, preparations, your, bath, your breakfast, perhaps even before your breakfast, uh, who are you all going to the quartermaster? Mm -hmm. I'm going I to mean, the quartermaster and Arden's going with me. I got my morning prayer session. I, I, I'm his roomie. He's praying to the god of explosions. How about you, too? <laughs> um, I guess uh, just go through my routine, make sure all my kit's in order. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably pretty starving. Yeah, breakfast would be good. Quartermaster needs us, though. It's good not to get on his bad side. I mean, we're already there, but... Say, is that a thing that you're capable of doing? I don't know. He is a street rat, and I'm a winger, so I don't know if we can ever get along, truly. Are you going or not? Yeah, I'll go. It's the newest Disney romance movie. John? Uh, after all my daily preparations, yeah, just... So, the, I mean, you, you would have your, your morning prayer. This would be, like, after you'd done your, your morning prep, so you could mm. still do that and go if you wanted to. Oh, well, uh... Uh, the quartermaster's not really a fan of me, to not, be fair. So I'm anyone. probably just gonna munch and uh, wait outside so until I'm supposed to. So not the goblin, but yeah. the rest of you head off to <laughs> the armory. We just go just to make him mad. Uh, to meet with the quartermaster, who turns to the group you coming in, uh, and immediately heads into the uh, or reaches down under the counter uh, beneath the cage and pulls up the silver dagger, puts on the counter, and then slides it through the space. What do you want me to do with this? I submitted that as evidence. It wasn't supposed to go to you. Evidence of what? And who would it go to? Evidence lockers back there. I manage everything. Myself. Alone. Still. <laughs> what in the bloody hell is this? What is this evidence of? Dagger looked out of place. Might have been stolen. Got it from the uh, sergeant's personal affairs yesterday. Okay. There's no blood on it. Uh, we had the majors look it over. Well, it's got a faint bit of magical aura on it. Oh, can They're I take a look? They're pretty confident that it's never drawn a single drop of blood from anyone. Fair enough. I'll take care of it. Please do. And uh, pushes it all over to the, the very edge of the counter. Catch it before it falls. <laughs> we did. Quick. <laughs> did all the equipment come back perfectly fine? Yeah, we 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 quite did. You got a weird sense of perfectly fine. We went back in a cart with a corpse. Oh. Slaughterhouse. Slicked with... What I would like to tell myself is entirely animal blood. But it's, yes, it's thank entirely. you. It's all cleaned up. It's filed. It's sorted. It's dealt with. Good job. How did the group of you... Don't ask. Where's your goblin? I don't want to know. He's over there. <laughs> How did the group of you bring more of a God's damned mess into my office than the death of the king? <laughs> well, How I ask again? I tried very hard. Well, it really started out the moment we entered the uh, the butchering house, because, you know... There's... Do you have anything else you need? No? Well, I need you, you to, to have a good day, sir. I don't want to hear a story. Do you understand the cause of the rhetorical question? You absolute buffoon. Yeah, you asked me a question, so I'm answering. Please? There's a whole lot of pig slop everywhere and blood. I, I, guess, our, I, know. I guess our payment isn't ready yet. <laughs> oh, actually, so about that. The quartermaster and armor are different people. It doesn't mean you can't ask them for it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Arden can't tell the difference. That's fair. <laughs> I didn't realize they were different people either. <laughs> yeah, well, because you're looking for like the accountant quartermaster who's like books and money and gotcha, gotcha, organization. Gotcha. That this guy is probably sending most reports to. Um, Do you know where he is? The quartermaster. Nope, I don't see him. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I guess we should go to him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's just yeah. Thank you for your business. 
Have a nice day. But I see them coming. One out of these days, I'm. He's, he's gonna have, wake up with a smile on his face. One of these days, I just know it. it I'm gonna have a, nothing to do he, with it. He, he, he would see the group of them coming out of the quartermaster's office. He needs a woman. He needs a woman. What was the last the time he visited a brothel? That's what yeah, I was, was just saying. I was about to, to say something long. Hey, we passed that uh, that clouds boat. Apparently, that's his place. Maybe if I maybe I should give him a little bit of extra coin and, and send him that way. Maybe he'll come back feeling happier. I think happier. that would make I him very you upset. Should. I think he will take it wonderfully. Okay. I don't think that's a good idea. It, if I may, gentlemen, let me just suggest, uh, as an expert of not being wanted, um, I would just leave him alone. <laughs> as an expert of not being wanted. He's got the point. <laughs> You know, uh, this is actually the one area of expertise I'm going to take you up on. <laughs> I would also probably take him up on fire-related expertise. Oh, you're that too. Well, I guess... Hi. So you have the dagger back from the quartermaster here. Um, Time to figure out who it belongs why to. Why nothing of it. Uh, he did say that mm. it was magical and a magical. quick... Take a look at it. Do you have to take magic slash read aura? I do. I also have quick identification. Fair enough. Um, give me uh, you can literally just spend a minute turn it over and looking for anything and you can go ahead and roll me a figure check this will be, be, be a cultism for this it's going to be a 15 you said 50 I was like, did we just go back to Age of Ashes <laughs> 15 15 um it does as a dagger. radiate a slight magical aura, but looking it over, it doesn't bear any runes or anything. It's nothing that you can see that is inscribed into it. Um, and with a 15, you can't tell exactly what it is that this enchantment consists of. Uh, in fact, it doesn't appear to have any powers of any kind. Uh, you would know with your, 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 with your nature... You would know that, like, silver and alchemical silver, like what you use to fight Fey and whatnot, are very different things. And this is a dagger made of silver, like the jeweler's metal, which is not the sturdiest of metals. And it's entirely possible that this is a very light enchantment to help the knife keep its shape to uh, simple abjurations to resist damage and wear and tarnishing, which silver is very prone to doing. Oh. But you're not really sure. But but maybe we can use it to. F but but we. I, I guess it won't work against those those things that we see in the in the streets that we were fighting yesterday. Is there imps? The imps. The imps. Well, it's like a kitchen knife. How would you? Easy. Are you gonna throw it? No. It, no. No. It's it's. You're gonna throw it. Aren't I think you? it no. might. I think it might work okay against they. Maybe. Well, let me, before we go using it on people, <laughs> it would absolutely be common knowledge to anyone that lives in uh, Corvosa that imps are weak to silver. But other than Arden, I don't think any of you would know that alchemical silver is a different thing. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm trained in crafting. So it may, maybe if we if we Roll exchange... me a crafting check. <clears throat> well, the thing is, I don't even think you guys would realize you're talking about different things. Eleven. You would not realize you're talking about different things. You'd be like, yeah, silver is great against this. Not realizing this is not the thing oh, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. great against this. Well, I, I guess we'll, we'll hang on to it. Uh, bef yeah, before we go using it on people, it, I'd like to at least figure out where he got it from. I, mean, I would hope we would never use it on people. I mean, all right. That's a little rude. I have yet to use a dagger against anyone. Yeah, you used no, a you spear. Used <laughs> I used a spear. Which is just a dagger on a long stick, And I used really. my fists. Yeah, but, but a spear I is a dagger on a long stick. And if I recall, you different... used your sights on that guy in the fish, All right, which is don't... just a big <laughs> knife, honestly. I don't want to talk about that guy. That guy was very, very annoying. You try getting hit in the head twice with a bucket of fish paste. I'm like, yeah, it would drive me to murder, I mean, I'm I got sure. hit in the head with plenty of trash cans when I was younger. Did you put it in your mouth? Is it fish paste? I, it, it, this never happens to me. Yes, exactly. You, right. will, you don't know what it's like to be on that end of the fish paste. I mean... So, anyways, the whole point <laughs> is we're going to figure out who the, this belongs to because it's fancy dancing little piece of metal. Oh, uh, he uh, the, the sergeant actually did mention uh, a noble house, our Arconis, as the people who are donating the animals. I'm going to flip a coin 50-50. That belongs to them. But I'd, I'd probably give it better odds than that. Uh, okay, we're not going to give this back to them because the last time we did that, we ended up working for the guard. 
All right, I mean, so you're not I mean, wrong. Give me the dagger, and I'm going to go ask him if this is theirs. Okay, maybe later. But first, we're going to go see the quartermaster. The other one. Took that way. Oh, heading back into uh, the keep and find the quartermaster. The day later, they would have been able to organize your payment of however much I told you they were paying. 50, 50. for a live. 50 for a live, so 10 gold each. Woo! Um... Mm. But like I felt like it was ten gold a piece, but I didn't have confidence, and I realized I did not write it down like I thought I did. Notes. So I was definitely sending no, on that wait. one to look at the vod before no, next it was week. Fifty if he was dead, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so fifty gold pieces uh, mm. requisition to the party, which then I imagine you would split them. It seems to be the way we're doing it this time. Yeah. yeah for, I mean, you guys are for now. Yeah. I can know each other silencers. before like three days ago. So yeah, seems reasonable. Understandable that you're not going to have like one person holding the purse here. Uh, but with your coin, uh, it doesn't seem like you have been called to action for anything yet today, which means that you would be free to pursue the owner of this dagger or really anything else that you want throughout the town. Can we, the... can we, can we go look for that guy? Oh, what, what the, guy? The, the friend that knows things. Yeah, because now we have a dagger that belongs to a noble house. That is a good point. Or a well, senior. Well, I mean, I could, if you... Follow me quietly. I can lead you the right direction. I don't think that one knows about anything about following quietly. Right. So put a gag in his mouth. I, <laughs> I, sounds... I'm actually very good at going quietly. <laughs> you just have to tell me that we're going quietly. Right. In that case, uh, me, Darren, and maybe, maybe you, maybe. I mean, you do have a big gun, so that would make sense. Yeah, we'll, we'll do most of the talking. I, I won't do any talking now that you told me not to. That's fair. All right. Uh, I guess I go ahead and start. Are you all going? This is a group field trip? Well, it's... mm, You know the dude better than us. Is he going to get spooked by five people coming looking for him? Five very Mm. spooky people. And big guns. Um, Floblin would ponder just for a second. He would probably end up suggesting... He he would just pull out a stick from, like, out of the street and start drawing in the dirt. And he was like, Right, so this is kind of the alleyway I normally go to when I rummage for trash in the first thing in the morning. And I would suggest maybe... Uh, you, me, and Darren would, you know, approach the front, do the, you know, face business and talk and blah, blah, blah. Are we apprehending him? Not I quite. See. However, I would suggest that Arden and John would be nearby in the back in case, you I, know, something goes wrong. I think I'm not going to go along with this field trip. You don't have to, but it would be what I would suggest. There are uh, other things that I wish to do. Um, oh, you could do what you want. I'm I'll just, keep uh, my ear out for anything about your cousin Colin. Was it n- nephew? Nephew. Sorry, Colin. Colin. Um, yeah, for, I'm gonna go. This, it might be best if it's just three of us. All right, that's fine. But definitely keep him away. No offense. Now nah, we'll have the two of you looking for your nephew. I ain't no big deal. Right. In that case, follow me, gents. We're gonna go talk to a shady man. Darren, you're going too. Am I? Oh, I, I think quietly you're in the corner, so. dragged along. Like you <laughs> got like, are well, you, are if you, you haven't noticed already, I was about to say, if you haven't noticed already, Floplin's already taking a liking to you because for some reason y'all were late. So. I, I, I'm going to yeah, wait. wait. It just kind of keeps happening. <laughs> the two of you were doing the same thing poorly together. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to wait a minute till they're out of earshot, cast Pass Without Trace, and follow them. Okay. <laughs> so anyone following? Arden specifically yep. uh, is going to think they're following three people. Um, Orsini's is almost the opposite corner of Corvo, so from Citadel Voshevik being up in uh, Garrison Hill itself. Before we get too far away, does anyone actually know what Colin looks like? Well, Arden's also with you. I'm not looking for Colin. <laughs> I've never seen him before. We should probably want to ask Arden what he I'm looks probably, like. I probably, I have no idea, but I just, I just know that I would... Being a goblin, I would assume it looks kind of like him, if it's family. Can I sneak up behind them? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, jeez. Give me a stealth roll. I don't need to know what Colin looks like. I'm looking for the dude Foblin knows. Nat 20. <laughs> Finally, I get to look awesome. To ruin the moment, can I perception to try and see your No, coming? because your perception DC is not 30. So Arden sneaks up behind you guys. I'm just thinking maybe we should ask Arden what his nephew actually looks like before we ditch him to he, go and ask. He's about talk four to foot the... ten. Ah! Ugh. I told you I was quiet when I wanted to be. We know this, but you're not supposed to be here. 
I'm going to be very quiet and I'm going to go with you. But to be fair, you don't know anything about him or how he got lost or what he looks like or anything. As much as I love arguing with Arden, I think he has a point in this one. I won't say anything until you tell me to, but I do think I need to be here. Right. All right. All right. All right. Fine. Only speak when I give you permission then. I already said I would. Okay. Come on then. I grip he's, you. He continues to curse. Make your walk <laughs> up to uh, Orisini. So, John, you said you, want, you had stuff you wanted to do there. What are you after? I'm actually going to be going around to pawn shops, particularly ones that would buy higher end product. I'm looking. I'm still looking Y'all for my nephews. That looks like that looks like somebody already described Poland. Oh, whatever. Are you gonna be okay? <laughs> I would like to purchase some children, please. <laughs> just walks by, call and have a oh cart for this. <laughs> <laughs> just walks by, and hey, that looks like Colin. Oh. I don't. He's he's like a living mannequin. He's just like <laughs> posing in this nice coat in the store. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> sir. I like the coat. I'll buy the coat. <laughs> um, you would. Uh, so you start looking around, uh, working through Highbridge as the nearest district. Uh, but certainly making your way generally up towards Midland at the heart of the city. Uh, you, it's not impossible that you'll find something of value over to the far west and cliffside, but it's not... Needle and haystack. It's not like a pawn shop kind of neighborhood. Like, it's yeah. kind of... Cliffside and Pillar Hill are, are pretty up, operant. Everything kind of west of here is pretty bougie. If you're looking for pawn shops, you might like, glance briefly around High Bridge, but then you're just kind of going north up the docks. Um... So as you're making your way up there and you guys are traveling to uh, Orisini's, you would just be walking down, not the, the mainest road in town, but more like the side thoroughfares where these shops would be located. I mean, they're there for business. And uh, you'd see a guy leaned up against the side of the building, uh, his head almost like laid back, like he's barely even conscious. And it's not like 10 a.m. at this point, it's pretty early in the morning. And he pulls his head forward. Uh, he's got leather armor on that looks like it is like properly tailored and fitted to him. Uh, it's probably a fine make. It's kind of hard to tell under like the grime. Uh, it has not been maintained, and it is pretty clearly stained down the front uh, by what, from judging from the overpowering smell, is almost certainly beer. Uh, the dude looks to be in his mid thirties. Kind of a dour face, unshaven stubble, a few days worth of growth, framing his jaw. Um, this is the sad guy, and he looks pretty kind of sad. Uh, and he looks over. He looks Ooh. so sad. Wow, looks, his he, art looks real wow. really sad. He's got the saddest art in the universe. That's what I look like. Sepsinia. He's got the second saddest art in the universe. Yeah. I'll have to show yeah. you Sepsenia someday. Her character art literally has like mascara tear streaks on the sides <laughs> of her face. Second saddest character art. Uh, he looks kind of like with this face. And he looks, he just sort of looks around the street and sees you. And then like looks back at you like a slow double take. Almost a second or so later. And his face kind of picks up and he seems stagger off of the wall here. Uh, and as he does, there's a jangle in a metal. You see a big long sword, a pretty heavy long sword at his hip with a, a very nice hilt displayed here with a scabbard similarly covered in grime and crap. Uh, Navi, Navi, hey, Navi. Uh, and he sort of staggers uh, across the street directly over towards you. Navi, Navi. Uh, claps his hands on your shoulders. Uh, sort of looks at his own hands. And kind of confused and up in your face. Naffy. Naffy, my guy. My guy. How you been? Here. I've been really well, actually. Who is Naffy? Naffy. You? <laughs> You're funny. I'm You're fine. I like you. I like you, Nephi. And uh, he will literally, like, step forward very into... He's already put his hands on his shoulder. Very into personal space, like, to hug you if you are not going to, like, physically do something to prevent it. No, he's like... He just pulls his eye. And he's, he's a decently large man. He's about maybe, like, 6'3". 
Uh, he's not, he's, he's a pretty big guy. Big ol' arms just kind of around you. Man, Nephi, Nephi, I, oh, it's so good to see you. I'm, I'm glad, I'm so glad that he, he feels like puts more weight on you. Almost he's kind of leaning into you with his arms right down you. I'm so glad you're still here. You're okay with everything. Oh. You're the best. <laughs> yeah, no, everything is everything is fine. Let's get you sitting down. It looks like you've been drinking since like five o'clock this morning. Make me a. Uh, you're not. There's no. You're not from here. There's no way you would know who this guy is. I don't know. Let maybe make you it. Bang out a roll. Somehow. Remember a that check. chart of like levels of. I was trust. just thinking that. I was just thinking that. I was seeing it play out before my eyes. Hmm. Society, you say. Like, this wasn't even physically happening, and you could hear the... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, society, right? Society, yep. A roll of three. You have I got no a three. no idea who this is. Um, but he, he kind of laughs and pulls himself up and puts his hands back in his shoulders. And, like, almost rails back a little too far as he's standing back up and rides himself. Ha, ha, ha. No. Yeah. No. You need... You... you what are you doing here, man? This is... It's how is Sandpoint? Um, the Sandpoint was nice. Yeah, I'm actually looking for a really expensive ring and sound. We need to. We need to. I need to come. Come here. You. You haven't. I drank as much. You. We. We need to. Um, and just kind of like gestures vaguely towards the street next to you. Come on, let's 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 go find a tavern. I'll buy you. I gotta buy you a beer. You gotta tell me how things been. Man, I haven't seen you you and and it's like it kinda stops for a second, like almost disassociates from reality. <laughs> I don't know. Man, it's been for like five years? Something it ten been years? Five. Has it been? Has it been five years? I feel like it's been five years. I haven't I seen you like... in forever. <laughs> like, it feels almost like a lifetime that I've what, seen you last. What are you, what are you, come on, come on. And he, like, put, goes to put, like, a hand around your shoulder and then try to just, like, take you down I'm, the street. You know what? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this man... Sure, why not? <laughs> And so, Actually, I'm just gonna like just kind of brace myself up against him and support him as we just go to the nearest tavern. He's absolutely taking you to the nearest tavern. Absolutely. And here taking... we're at in uh, Midland. It's not going to be terribly far. So as you're staggering with your new drunken friend into the tavern, <laughs> mission aborted. So <laughs> <laughs> mission absolutely <laughs> failed. Normally, <laughs> the chart follows the proper flow. Every now and then, you come across someone like Colby who gets in the van because you promised him candy. They even promised him candy. He's a dude. You want to get my van? Let's go get some beers. He's like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did offer him to buy him a beer. So that's pretty, that's better than candy. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> when I get my van. I got beer. That's the real bait right there. I just want the candy. <laughs> that's I would also it... I would also go for the candy, but I don't drink, so I'm not a fair comparison. <laughs> exactly. It's just, it's water, man. Children. I, I like water. So uh, the other four of you. <laughs> May, led by Flomblin somehow. <laughs> I, I, have really, I have really good charisma. You He's have, a torch. You have also I, yep. just surprisingly <laughs> great context. Up to uh, Orisini's. Uh, all across the narrows through or Old Corvosa into. And this is the first time you've really gone like deep into this district since everything has happened. And it is weirdly probably the most unchanged from your usual day to day, but also not a place I imagine anyone's really going to go mm. in their day to day unless you really have to. Uh, it's definitely looking worse for wear. Uh, I call it home. The beggars have probably octupled, uh, especially along the bridges of the Narrows itself, and the four of you approaching, looking like some relatively well-off gentlemen, and also this weirdo, uh, would certainly find yourselves almost like barricaded at parts of your journey by beggars and panhandlers just for a scrap of coin or food or anything. Uh, but making your way up through nearly to the southwestern extreme of the city, not far from the old Fort Corvosa up on the hill, a small establishment that looks, from the outside, 
uh, no different from any other tavern throughout the city. Uh, it's unremarkable, save for that it seems to be in decently good condition and fairly well off, uh, which is a bit of a not unique situation, but an oddity, certainly, for anywhere with an old Corvosa. Uh, but heading up to the steps here. It would have a, a fenced-in frontal yard. The whole building and even this yard set a little bit back from the very narrow winding streets that peek their way through Garrison Hill. It would be brought into much starker contrast here because the top of Garrison Hill is just so decrepit. This is far and away the poorest and most run-down section of all of Corvosa. The fact where there are just abandoned ramshackle buildings, like wholly collapsed structures, not uncommon. Several with invisible distance. And then amidst all of that, this perfectly normal, fine tavern. Uh, so if you head up the walk and in, the bar area would not be particularly large. Uh, nothing more than a pair of boots and a single, a pair of boots <laughs> and a single table uh, with the bar set to your right side as you enter. And only a single figure inside the building at all as the four of you come in. The one behind the bar who stands quite tall, maybe fairly young, very dark hair, uh, cleanly brought back and tied into a straight braid that hangs near all the way down her back. Uh, her tea and features making her relatively remarkable throughout the city of Corvo. So this is not a very sizable teen population here. But she stands behind the bar with her hands folded in front of her almost like a butler or a coatman at the door mm -hmm. and a warm smile on her face as the four of you enter. Are, well, are all of you coming in or are you doing, going flobbling some weirdo stand outside plan? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think it would be best if definitely myself... Arden and maybe, maybe Darren. I don't know. Actually, yeah, let's just all go in at once. Those no things. Loblin's plan did not survive contact with the enemy. Neither did uh, mine. Before you step inside the dim but warmly lit <laughs> interior, not immaculately clean, but far from run down, um, of only a single small shelf of liquor is visible behind the bar uh, up at the level of the counter. There are no taps or kegs or anything really in sight. Uh, smiling at you, she doesn't immediately say anything. Almost there's just enough of an awkward pause right as you go to speak. Welcome. What can I get for you? Ah, hello there, miss. Well, uh, our friends and I are a bit lost and we were, wonder and we, uh, were wondering if maybe we could uh, exchange a favor for a favor or some, maybe some information by chance. Of course. Uh, what is it that you seek? He kind of looks at Arden and gives him the, you know, the nod to... She turns her, like, almost lit by these uh, small sconces and candles as it is. Almost creepily, like, doll-like smiling face towards you. Which the smile has not broken or left her mouth at all since you've entered. Is it just the head that turns? Just uh, to make it even more creepy. It's yeah. like the creepy maid, yeah. <laughs> it's just a poppet. Very tall pop. Mm -hmm. She's like 5'11". My... Standing on a stool behind the counter. It's three poppets in a trench coat. <laughs> My nephew was kidnapped by Gadrin Lamb. I'm looking for him. That is an unfortunate circumstance, to be sure. Very well. What have you to offer? Well, as far as I can really say, we... Have, uh, as you can clearly tell, I have quite a few friends that are skilled in many different ways. I have this gentleman here who is a very large gun and knows how to use it. Uh, and then I have a very skilled young uh, sable company in training. Uh, I'm a fire goblin. Darren's so uncomfortable with <laughs> this. And my friend Alden, despite his um, demeanor, uh, is very good at uh, communing with nature and throwing rocks at people. You are certainly a very unique group. That said, uh, Orisini has many friends with a great many skills. And locating a single child in the city of Corvosa, possibly even beyond, 
it would be a challenging task. Oh, I guarantee you our uh, combined skills are, are more than worth the effort. You're a sable company, are you? She says to uh, Darren, clearly, specifically. Uh, yes. I had imagined that with the current state of the city, uh, all of your members would be occupied. They closed the barracks down and uh, mm-hmm. sent me home. A I'm tra- too young. A trainee, then? Yes. Hmm. This is interesting, but it is not something that I'm sure Horacini would be able to aid you with. Well, how about this, then? How about we do a small favor, and in exchange you can give us anything you can find out, whether it's just a rough idea or even a rumor? I don't know. I do not know there is much that he is wanting for. Well, well, in that case, Floblin kind of crawls up to the counter and pulls out like a little parchment pen and he kind of doodles a kind of crude but somehow legible map of where he stays mostly in the part of the city. So this is my dumpster. Uh, If you have anything in mind, whether it's a favor or information, you can always try and find me there. You are searching for your nephew, Arden, was it? Uh, this is certainly something where time is very much of the essence. This is urgent. I find that many people have much to offer, surprisingly, if they dig deep or think on their connections. You we, are hopeful for the Sable Company. We, what do the rest of you do? We have some information, possibly, about House Arcanus. Mm. A hunt. <laughs> They've been... Uh, Let's just say they've been uh, supplying certain elements that the guard and the queen are not particularly happy with at the moment. Many times it is interesting. The source of information is more intriguing than the information itself. How would you have learned of this? Let's just say that we were sent to hunt the source down. Sent? By whom? Uh, that's not... Interested parties. Hmm. Well, it is uh, intriguing, perhaps. Oh, if you'll excuse me one moment. I will check with the master and see if he has time to meet with you. And she uh, bows her head and then walks uh, alongside the counter to a door leading into the back of the building, leaving the four of you out here for the moment. So Flobin turns over to Arthur. Now... Normally, I would be enraged, but at the same time, you actually came through on that, so I'm proud of you. For one, you're learning. Very good. But, uh, here's how I see the situation is going to turn out. She's going to go back, talk to uh, the boss for a little bit, and, uh, at best, we might get a hint in exchange for the information you might be able to provide. And even with a hint, we can turn that into something, so... It's also possible that the information we have, even though it, it, it doesn't do us any good because it's already known by all the people we know, might, might be very valuable to them because they don't know it yet because it just happened. That's also true. Right? Well, uh, at this point, we just have to The door would wait. open and her uh, smiling figure would reemerge. And door would unlock. I believe uh, Orasini may be able to be of aid to the group of you. Yes. Oh. And, uh... Steps aside and gestures to the doorway. Oh, excellent. Come on, folks. You, okay. You, you have a beautiful a smile, if it, you don't yeah. mind me saying so. She uh, bows her head briefly. Uh, this connects back to a second chamber, uh, which very plainly appointed. Uh, but that which is here, furniture, the table... Uh, a plush chair on the back side, the <clears throat> stools before it are all of quite fine make. Uh, a de- things that could not be acquired at any degree of cheaply and would possibly be difficult to find or import into Corvosa in the best of times. A well, little decoration there is on the counters and the walls around the chamber is vivid and exotic. A variety of tapestries, strange paintings, portraits and uh, odd sculptures of vaguely humanoid but almost unsettling figures. As the group of you go in, uh, the woman closes the door behind you. 
uh, leaving the four of you alone in this room for only a brief moment before one of the pairs of doors in the back opens. And a middle-aged man with a head completely shaven clean, uh, several deep furrowed ridges on his brow, uh, but a fine vest and a tailored dress shirt belying his access to the finer things, even in these strange times of the city. He steps in, looks across the group you, uh, a bit hunched. One of his eyes, uh, just a little bit askew. Uh, they don't quite both fix on you as he looks and puts a bit of a crooked smile on his face. Hi, oh, we're fine and welcome to have a seat here. Uh, well, thank you for having us, he bows. And he takes a seat in that big plush chair. Mm. And settles back in it, bridges his fingers in front of him. That's a terrible shame. Terrible shame of missing child. Something near and dear to my heart. Something I'm hopefully able to aid you with. Gage and lamb behind it. Doubly so unfortunate, but very much not a unique story. He, 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 he's... Well, no information for free. Because oh, I, I figure it's worth in the negotiations. that We might also have a lead on the lamb incident if you'd be interested. Oh... Uh, <laughs> I've heard, starts uh, a little bit. <laughs> pretty terrible fate has befallen Lamb's whole little organization he had down there, meager as it was. Details oh. of it, I suppose, at this point are by and large relevant, are they not? Yeah. It's all done and happened. He's out of the picture. I was just making sure you knew ahead of time. I didn't want someone saying something that they didn't need to for free. But you had some, well, mildly interesting introductions out in that entryway there. You've been investigating, uh... A group of interested parties, apparently. The Arconas. And, you know, they got a lot of dirty laundry gets aired out from time to time. They're a very interesting family, with their fingers in a great many pies. And comes to the territory, unavoidable. What I want to know is who sent you? Not here, of course. I do believe this is a cause well and dear and true to your heart. Uh, and he looks across the, the group of you before his eyes land back on Arden. But, who sent you investigating the Arconas? Or whatever dealings they might be having. We, that was us, wasn't it? We, 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 we were investigating him, but it, it didn't start out that way. We uh, started out investigating something completely different. The fact that uh, that house got involved was a, a piece of information that fell lovingly into our lap. Well, I, I dare say you found yourself in a, a very unfortunate situation with your nephew here. Gadrin Lamb was a cruel and terrible man. A great many things could have happened, but it's not impossible. He might still be saved. He may yet draw back. But I am very interested in this story of yours, particularly its beginnings. We were essentially given a bounty to bring this man, what, what was his name again? Ver... Varric von Kaskerson. Varric von Kaskerson. And Kaskerson, that sounds, sounds a bit familiar to me. Definitely some I've heard before. But uh, I feel like we are skipping critical issues, uh, critical moments in our story here. You got a bounty from who? Interested parties. Uh, you know, fair, I know it. There aren't a whole lot of bounties getting put out in the city these days that ain't coming from the crown itself or one of its arms. Sir, if you don't mind me saying so, you don't continue to get business in this city if you go around saying names for the people who hired you. That is... I, I can tell you that that particular piece of information holds no value to you. Oh, that is uh, simultaneously an impressive... And truly disappointing level of wisdom you're showing there. I apologize. I misunderstood the situation. I believe we were here to exchange information. But... We are. If that is how the case is going to be, I do truly wish you the best in finding your missing nephew. And, uh... <sighs> the guard... I already stood up from his chair. The guard. The Corvosan guard. Yes. 
Yes, the guard. A trainee in the arms of the Sable Company found himself thrown in with Citadel Voshevik in a time like this. Now that is an interesting tale. But none of you, uh, he just sort of really looks at Floblin, kind of strike me as the uh, enlistment type. I well, can't imagine you signed up, went to your boot camp, took your oaths, did you? Well, uh, uh, the best way I can describe it, if I may, is uh, we just happen to be individuals that were in the right place at the right time. Hmm. Rough conscription. We, I, at least, was happy to help out. We killed Lamb. And we found ourselves in possession of something unexpected that was valuable to the crown. A brooch. No. A brooch. How did you know? Well... Uh, my business is to know when to understand things, to keep in mind of what's going about. Uh, you are, then I take it, the party responsible for that. Interesting to go from, well, uh, quite a fair number of people who've had dealings with that old lamb fella in the past and had no real success at tracking him down. I tell you what, I tell you what, out of the goodness of my heart, I'm trying to save a child. I assume your nephew is not yet of age. He's 12. Well, then consider this information on the house. Let it not be said that I, or Rossini, do not do favors out of the goodness of my heart to friends such as you here at this table. <laughs> oh, you guys have a little bit of power. I'll, I'll do you a favor. You owe me one. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're a lot of what was it? Lambs, lambs came from. Uh, it's unfortunate. All kinds of confluences and circumstances, situations of birth, lost parents, poverty. Uh, really, it's just a damn shame behind each and every one of them, I would expect. But you know where a lot of them go? It's interesting. He didn't run that operation by himself. Well, he largely did. Lamb was the head of the things. But. Maybe it's a bit of a stretch to call it a family business. But I know that at least uh, more than one or two of those wayward lambs of his, when they'd outlived their usefulness or just weren't towing the line, got handed over. He keeps things pretty close. He keeps them within his family. I don't right know where his son takes them. Well, he's got a use for them, I'm sure. Are we going to have to be calling the whole family line? If there's anything I know about Gage and Lamb or any of his operations, you would be doing yourselves, myself, and the city of Corvosa a favor. And I'm sure those friends you got the guard would more than thank you for it. If wow. the guard even cared about Lamb, we wouldn't have to bend in the situation. Well... But go ahead, Lamb's son. Ah, Lamb's son. Damn precious little even someone like me knows about him. I know he is a conjurer. He is a magi of some kind. Uh, he been studying up at the academy within town before they, of course, shuttered them doors in line of this whole terrible business with the throne. Uh, but I haven't heard much about him. He, well, to parties other than yourselves, is not a terribly interesting figure, I imagine, save for his ten tenebrous connection to his father and uh, what little kind of circuit he's running. Hmm. Huh. So but he's, he's not been anyone that's really been worth keeping a lot of tabs on. But I can tell you, the boy's name is Rolf. And I do believe he still resides within Corvosa somewhere. I wonder if the Academy keeps his address on file. It's totally possible, but getting information out of them, if he ain't registered these days, is going to be all but impossible. I've had them gates shuttered since the news of the King broke. Not a soul in or out. And you know they got the magic to enforce that. Their magic dumps quantities of imps into the city every single month. It's a true nuisance, ain't it? No consideration. Well, it is. Uh, I suppose a poor showman on my part that other than a name and a possible destination ain't a whole lot I can give you. But I, were I a betting man, and that fortunately has not been one of my vices historically, I don't think Rolf lives in Corvosis so much as he just seems to operate here. Hmm. Those lambs that Gadrin's had his way with, that he doesn't just uh, toss out into the river or disappear into his strange little basement. Well, I never hear nothing about him again, and I don't think a single one of them's ever turned back up. Well, uh, 
Have you know, actually, may, may or may not come to a shock to you, but I was one of his lambs many years ago. Well, I'm sure you're, uh, your fellows in arms would be a damn sight proud to see you being a part of his undoing. <laughs> if you only knew. <laughs> now, what information you can get from the Academy, I suppose that's up to you at this point, but you find Rolf, I think you got a, about the best shot you're going to get at finding your, finding your kid. Well, we can certainly say we definitely appreciate this valuable information. Though it's small, it's, it's still got significant value, don't I you do think? I do what I can for the community. And as I said, the Lamb family are terrible sorts. Oh. Fortunately, I believe there's only one of them left. So if you could give Rolf a good knocking too, like you did Gadrian, I'm sure you'll solve a great number of this city's problems. At least for some some sorts out there is going to be happy about it. Oh, That's don't worry. His Preferably. flames just start to flicker a little bit more. He'll have his same end like his folder. <laughs> Preferably, this one ends behind bars, but I wouldn't blame you if it didn't. Now, my good friends, I'm afraid there isn't much Orisini can do for you. But again, I'm only glad that I can help in whatever small way that I can. Well, well you gave us a direction, and that's plenty. In my family, we remember those who have helped us in the past, and we make sure that we repay our debts. Well, that's very kind of you, Arden. I must say, yes. You want to give him an IOU, Rock? I'm, I'm a fairly happy man with my life here in the city. I ain't wanting for much in this world. But, you know, if something comes to mind that maybe I could use a little bit of your help, I'll be certain to find, to find you, let you know. Right. Well, on that note, your, uh, your maid has uh, directions to my dumpster, then. That's a friend's do, ain't it? <laughs> I think it'd be easier to ring you up at Citadel Bolshevik, I imagine. Well, Either way, hopefully this all works out for you. Thank you. Thank you again. Maybe we'll speak again someday. What? I might like that. Flopin kind of turns on and gives, like, the head motion. I'm like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, the group of you come out the door back to this uh, woman still standing with a smile on her face, and she she bows uh, her head to the group of you, uh, not hurrying you out or anything, just looking as you leave. That smile still upon her face. Now that my friend is at a tavern with his new drunk buddy, and as the two of you stagger into the uh, nearest bar. Uh, which it's 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. is nearly as empty as uh, Orsini's up there. This guy, drunk fellow, whoever he is, staggers off you, and there's a, just a, a single man uh, polishing off the counter, uh, seemingly just kind of aimlessly. There's nothing to clean. No one's been here yet. He's just doing it to have something to do. He looks up and visible disgust at the overwhelmingly drunk man that is staggering towards the counter. Uh, he slams both of his hands down on the counter, though you're, you're your new friend here. I, I, I want a round of drinks for my, my friend, my friend Neffy, and he's, he's talking down into the counter. Like just he's ordering from the menu. <laughs> he's all the way up here from Sandpoint. So you gotta, you gotta, what a good ale. For my friend here. And, uh... He's gonna approach the counter. And the, the barkeep just kind of likes He's gonna you. pull him in as... Who is this guy? I assume he's just a nuisance. Looks like a drop to me, friend. Alright, then do me a favor and what? just water down his ale. I'll we'll still pay you full price. He'll, uh... He'll turn around and start preparing a couple of pints <laughs> of this. As you, your buddy here is still got his hands on the counter, leaning on it for support, he sort of looks up to you. Now, for you, you're, 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 the, you're the, you're the best. You know, you know that, you know that. It's been, you got a standpoint is so far from Corvosa. Like, it's so, it's like, yeah, I, I, Listen, listen, we don't have to talk about me. How have you been doing? How's, how's life here in Corvosa? Besides the death of the king and all that. I just got back in town myself the other day. I... Don't you dare. <laughs> Did I... Did I... Before... You were... You... It was... 
And he just kind of flaps his head down on the counter, just flops onto it. And the barkeep turns around for a moment, shakes his head, and goes back to preparing your drinks here. He's just face down on the counter. I'm a boomer. 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 You, you alive, sir? You, you okay? You sleeping it off? I think he's sleeping it off. <laughs> Oh, nope, nope, now he's trying. Yep, that's about right. <laughs> oh, just pat him on the back. <laughs> zah, zah, zah. You okay? Come on, talk to Neffy. Uh, Neffy's here. What's wrong, buddy? Hold his head up. Ah! Uh, oh, man, Neffy. I didn't. You know, did I did I tell you about about sad, so sad. <laughs> Sab- Sabina Sabina? No, you haven't told me about Sabina. What happened? Tell I, me about it. Come on, friends. I don't know, man. I I nephew, She was she was like, and he puts one hand back on your shoulder and one hand like on your chest that is uncomfortably close to your face with his face. And you can still like absolutely smell the ale on his breath here from whatever he's been drinking earlier. She was the one, man. I saw it. I had, I had, we had a future. She was, oh, she was so beautiful. You telling me? You're, you're out here drinking at 10 o'clock in the morning because you got your hearts broken. Man! Naffy! Um, oh, I get everything. it! And he points at the door. What's everything? Man! It's hurt, I understand that. What am I supposed that. to do? Just go to work? Just go back to the vault of Vic? The do what? Not keep your mind on it. All this drinking isn't helping you any. <sighs> it's making it worse because all you'll do is look at uh, look at the L's and you sank really hard about Sabina. And the barkeep and puts the mugs down. I take it and just swig it back. Like, <laughs> just, this is just go ahead and just keep them coming, please. This is gonna be a very long morning. He just just taps the counter. I just put a cold piece. Just, takes it, turns around, <laughs> and goes back another <laughs> couple of times. <laughs> You always are like a copper, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. This is going to be a very long <laughs> morning, and I'm, uh, he needs it. He's just me. like, everything, nothing, nothing matters, Nephi. Nothing matters here. Uh, the king's dead, and everything's on fire. And Sabina doesn't want me. And why do anything? Why? Just, I can drink. Have you have you tried to fall find someone else? Zabina's not the only one. I promise you that. I've seen plenty of fine women. No. Just on my walk over here, I saw one. You should have saw her. Total knockouts. Did I not tell you? I, I had seen this was this is this is this is years. Drew up my was, memory. This was like this was like this was like eight years ago, man. This was like. Well, I still think about it. I still, I have. You know, I've only. Slap like 26 other women since then because I just can't stop thinking about Sabina. It's like, why do all these other why it matter? Why does it matter? Why does it matter? It's just to do it, man. It's just, it's basically a brothel, but you don't gotta pay for it. <laughs> Words to live by. <laughs> Why by the cow? Anyways, get the milk for free. Anyways, you you just caught only twenty six. I mean, when back when it's we probably was, like mid thirties. Yeah, it's like back when back when we used to go out on town. It was every single night, and you're telling me you got all caught up on one. You you don't you don't you know I look I don't understand at I, all. But he puts the next one. Brings the next he's, one. He's got, he's got him. He's going. Another one down. He hasn't touched his yet. So he's got two in front of him. Yeah, just, he just kind of looks at it and he like what's that thing where the mugs just on the table in front of me just Yeah. 
there's a name for tipping it. Tipping it over on the counter. There's a name for his face. There's a <laughs> there is a name for it, but it's not appropriate for stream. Uh, <laughs> buddy, we got to get you out there. We got to find the love of your life because that apparently wasn't Sabina. Uh, no, look, look, he pats his belly. He's a little. You little pudgy. Little beer gut. Listen, action going on. Women go for that now. <laughs> That's the dad bod. I can't avoid this. Well, my look, the city is either gonna be on fire until it isn't, or it's gonna isn't. It isn't. And then I just I don't. What do I? I gotta I gotta leave. I got. We can go back to Sandpoint. I can go to Sandpoint. I think I think what you need. Is a nice long sleep. Sleep it all off. And tonight no, or tomorrow, I'm, me and you go out on the town like old time sakes. I can't go Listen, out. Me and you? If the, I am. Me and you together were undefeatable, look, remember? Uh, but I. Look, I just. We gotta. We gotta go. We gotta go. We could. Why. Why. Go, we go back to Sand Point. We go, sand Point is so far away, though. Yeah, I need fresh. I need to go somewhere else where there is new beer and new women and I'm not going to get hung for desertion. We need... <laughs> I know just the place for you. Where? Come on, I'll take you there. <laughs> You're going to walk him back to freaking bullshit. Yeah, we're going to stop hey, on Havens on the way there. So <laughs> I found your ex. <laughs> oh no. This uh and the barkeeper hearing this, son of his third mug. Is that the friggin' watch captain? Hey. This is what three days does to a man. Uh, this is third round. <laughs> <laughs> on the bar. This can I use the rest? I give me a bottle of whiskey or something strong for the road. You give me a gold piece. Here you go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> like a half-empty bottle of whiskey. That's perfectly fine. If you get him out of here, take it. I don't want no trouble with the guard. That's fine. I just kind of, I have, I keep my badge just kind of under. It's okay. You could just flash your badge. Yeah, just. So. Thank you for your business, sir. Geez. The group of you. <laughs> She's fine. Dude. I did it. <laughs> I, fa I found him. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, hey, Ma, I did it. We put some things together here. That's the watch captain, like Sabina. I know a Sabina. <laughs> we met a Sabina yeah. in Castle Corvosa. We did. The watch captain? Let's get you home, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to hang so badly in the morning. The group of you, your various... Uh, escapades throughout Corvosa for the morning completed. I imagine you're all going to be winding way back towards Citadel Bolshevik. You with uh, favors received. Mission successful. Favors failed. yet to be given. Surely uh, no strings. You with who Our appears next to bounty. be the watch captain of Citadel Bolshevik. <laughs> We're speed who you just wandered into in the streets. We're Mission successfully failed. Mission failed successfully. successfully. <laughs> look, look, man. Thus far, this has been the man, the man we just met, Orsini, has made the most sense of anyone I have run into yet in this city. We are finding ourselves just a wide array of assorted hooks throughout the town here. But for now, that's all they're going to be. That's going to be it for us today. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Thank you for being here, supporting the show. Thank you to our sponsors, obviously, Paizo. It's their channel. It's their adventure. Norse Foundry for the cool click clacky math rocks mm -hmm. that we admittedly don't roll enough. Ark and Forge, the map rolling. software, making everything really easy. And Sirenscape, oh, I love not having, I cannot tell you how good the pre-made sounds. It saves us so much It probably time. saves us like two or three hours of work. You, yes. <laughs> you, <laughs> sound, yeah. It's beautiful. They're great. Check them out if you want some fantastic immersive sounds for your experience. It changes, yeah, like really, really it changes a lot more than you would think. They're really good. Hopefully we'll see you all next week. Yes. Same time, same place. 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Twitch.tv right here, where the hero cards actually do tell the future. With the hook. Good night, everybody. <laughs>